Karibu Karibu Yesu Karibu Moyo wangu Uponye Hallelujah Shall we just bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, indeed it is the confession in our hearts that we desire your presence, that we may receive your healing. Holy Spirit of God, we invite you again and again in our midst, in our hearts, that will you so pretend over this bed. We commit ourselves to you, our thoughts, our hearts, our words, everything that we are, everything that we have to say, we commit it to you. And we pray that, Lord, your comfort will reign in this sanctuary and your presence will reign, our Father. The Lord, even in this moment of pain and sorrow, that again, Lord, you will still speak to us. As we remember the life that was lived by our beloved Mary, we pray, Jehovah Father, that you will speak to us. We commit this program and this afternoon to you. And we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, that you reign sovereign. For the glory and for the honor of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Allow me to greet us this particular afternoon in the name of our Lord and our Savior. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Passes to behalf of uh, the leadership of Sitam Valley Road, our senior pastor, who is also our region of us here, that is also here with us, is just to welcome us to Sitam Valley Road this particular afternoon as we comfort with uh, the family of Mary. We pray that the presence of God will indeed be with us. And uh, just in case uh, you need some assistance within. Uh, this particular compound and premises, uh, somewhere at the back there, you will find some uh, uh, our, some of our ushers, and they will be able to assist you accordingly in uh, any area that you will need. But again, uh, um, just to again just remind us that whenever we gather like this, it's just a kind reminder that if you have with yourself maybe some valuable items, a phone or something. Kindly take good care of it, just in case somebody sneaked in with uh, not very good intentions. So we kindly ask you to take care of your handbags, your valuable items, as we just fellowship together and be comfort with this family. We uh, probably will get to a time that we'll acknowledge, we acknowledge, of course, that there are different clergies in our midst, but at an appropriate time, we'll get to appreciate and acknowledge the teams that we have. But for now, just allow me to give it back to our music team that they may just lead us in a number or so. Amen. Praise God, church. Amen. The world, we are told in the word of God that in all things give thanks. And we're just here to just give thanks for the wonderful time we spent with our mom, Mary. And just worship God because he has done great things for her. Amen. Amen.
with guys and what a friend we have in Jesus.
Amen and amen. Do you want to just appreciate the Lord that we could look to him today and live? Let's give him a better hand clap of praise. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords and we worship him this afternoon. Amen and amen. Let me invite you to please be seated. You may have your seats. Thank you so much, worship team. The Lord bless you. Would you appreciate, uh, would you help me appreciate our worship team for helping us? Um, with that part of our service. Again, welcome to Sitam Valley Road. We are delighted to have every one of you join us um, as we come to comfort and stand with the family um, of our departed sister Mary. Uh, it's good to see all of you. Um, in case any of us would like to access the places of convenience, to my extreme right, which is your left, if you go out through that door, just a few steps ahead, you'll be able to see the washrooms labeled there for both men and women. Please feel free to find help right there. Um, because of the nature of our program, we will also request all the speakers that will be coming to make tributes to please try your best to stick to two minutes. I know it's very difficult to talk about a dear friend in just two minutes because there is a lot to say, a lot of memories to recount um, because of how impactful um, our sister was to every one of us. But we'll kindly ask us to observe that and the Lord will bless us. At this juncture, I'd like to invite... Um, Candice Kabalika, together with Mark Baraka Karani, joined also with Michael to come and just help us with our scripture readings for this service, and the Lord will bless us. Would you just want to appreciate them as they come? Let's just clap our hands and, and encourage them as they come um, to give us some scripture readings. Um, we have a Bible here, so you may just come up, and then, and then after that, we'll be getting into tributes and speeches, and I'll be asking... Um, Lillian, to get ready. Um, amen. Karibuni sana. We can start with Candice Kabalika, who will be reading um, from the book of Psalm, chapter 46. Amen. Psalms, chapter 46, verse 1 to 10. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth will be removed, and though the mountains will be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake will it, with its swelling. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved, and God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The, nation, the nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The voice of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made dissolutions in the earth. He makes all seas to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear into two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still, I know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Praise the Lord, Church. Um, the, word, the word of the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1, that the righteous, ma the righteous perish, and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Praise God, church. Praise God, church. <laughs> Scripture reading comes from Revelation 7, uh, nine to, verse 9 to 17. After these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, 
and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and the Lamb, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fall on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arraying in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know, He's, so he said, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. Then shall neither hunger any more or thirst any more, the sun shall not strike them nor any heat, for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living foundation, fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Praise, uh, that is the word of the Lord. Mark and Baraka, uh, Mark and Michael for, for coming and for reading the scriptures to us. Let's give them a hand clap of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you very much. We would like to um, hear some tributes from selected individuals that will represent the larger majority um, of the rest of us. And um, um, our sister did have workmates, and I want to invite Lillian, um, whom I think they work together at the ICT um, Authority, um, she also had some colleagues at Kenya Postal Directories. Um, so we'll ask Lillian, please, if you may be able to just come up here and, and give a tribute on behalf of, of, of workmates. We'll really appreciate Lillian, are you with us? Is Lillian with us? All right. Okay, I think we will, we will move on with the rest of our program. Um, we would also like to, in a special way, appreciate... Um, friends of Matthew, Michael, and Mark who are here, particularly colleagues um, who have schooled with them. We have members from the Light Academy. Light Academy, are you there? Are you there? Would you, uh, would you just be upstanding? would like to call a representative um, who would come and maybe just speak on, on behalf of the community at Light Academy. If we could just have one of you come. Um, and then let's also have Mama Jerry. Mama Jerry getting ready to come. Please let's have one of you. Just walk to the front and make a tribute on behalf of Light Academy, and you can acknowledge any more that are with us. Let's appreciate our brother as he comes to do that. Mama Jerry, if it's possible, you could please come and sit close here um, and, and so that we can transit easily. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, church. Uh, to the clergy, the Karani family. Uh, Congregation and fellow mourners, Bona Yesu wa Sifiwe. Tusalimiane kwa mkono na mnai. My name is uh, Paul Nalo. Uh, I'm standing on behalf of Light Academy. Uh, today is uh, it's a difficult day for us as an institution uh, because um, we've lost someone who was part of our community, part of our family and a caregiver uh, to two of our very good students. Uh, but in times of sorrow and grief, uh, we are encouraged by God's word. And I'd like to share uh, God's word in Psalm 116, chapter 15, as written in the eulogy. Uh, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I repeat again, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We are reminded once again by the word of God 
that in the house of sorrow, God resides. God is with us here today. And to the family, to those of you who are close to Mary, I'd like to remind you that God will comfort you. He will ease your pain, uh, lean on him, and he will always be vindicated. Poleni sana, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Karibu sana, Mama Jerry. Uh, praise God. I'm not gifted. <laughs> Poleni sana. I'm uh, Matthew's, uh, Jerry's uh, mom, who is uh, Matthew's uh, good friend. And uh, I came to know Mary through Matthew and Jerry. They've been very good friends, so I happened to bond with Mary because of that. I'm so saddened, very sad because of this, but um, I know Mary is at a good place, and uh, in everything uh, around us, we should be able to know that uh, death stands aside just a little, because it's always with us, just around us. Matthew Pole. Pole sana, um, as you start normal new, God is around. Just know that God is able, God is love. In everything that you all do, God will see you through. May God comfort you at this time. Thank you very much, Mama Jerry. Let's appreciate her. Thank you, thank you for those wonderful words of comfort to our family. We would like to, in a special way, uh, acknowledge those that went to school together with Mary at different categories. Um, in our midst, do we have al alumni from Alliance Girls? Alumni from Alliance Girls, would you, would you just stand and wave so that we can see you? Great. Great. All right. Thank you. Let's appreciate alumni from uh, Alliance Girls. Yes, you may come, just the one of you. Um, please be seated. We also have um, alumni from University of Nairobi. Um, there is a representative who will speak on your behalf. Let's see all those that went to the University of Nairobi together, I think, with our brother. Yes, alumni from UON, the only university with the article V. All right, thank you. Um, how about the KU class of 1998? Are they with us today? KU class of 1998? Oh, on, wonderful. We have, oh, we have a few. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Let me invite our sister to, um, to make a remark on behalf of the Alliance Girls alumni. And as she does that, Steve Chege will be getting ready to come and represent another community that I'll mention shortly. Haribo. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, um, <clears throat> as I read the tribute, I'd like to request the class of 92 to please come and... Uh, <clears throat> so this is a, our tribute to Amboy from the AGHS class of 1992. How do you mourn a sister? How do you write about her when your heart screams no? We met one boy as young girls when we joined the Alliance Girls High School in 1989. We knew our sister as one boy Mushina. Her admission number was 4503. Wamboi was in Ban's house and a member of the W stream. Allow us to share with you the descrip our description of our classmate. Wamboi was one of our brightest right from day one. She was very friendly from the get-go and sporty, playing hockey and her special love, volleyball. On Sundays, she would be found in one of the PCEA out, outstations teaching Sunday school. You see, her ministry started way early. Wamboi sang well too. She was a member of the joint choir of the two alliances, 
where she sang soprano. And how can we fail to mention her great talent in fine art? Those of us who were aspiring artists, a small class of five students from a pool of about 180, got into each other's business, especially in our last two years of high school. But even in the most stressful of times of creativity, Wamboy was never short of a smile. Wamboy was never shy to question, to brainstorm, and wasn't afraid to share ideas because she seemed to understand much earlier than many of us that there was more than enough in the universe for everyone and that lighting another's lamp did not dim your own. Wamboy was a perfect mix of super seriousness and mega fan. And she was also cheeky, but not naughty. Those four years were formative for us and we transitioned on to university. Some of us joined Kenyatta University with Wamboy and our friendship still remained. Graduation came and went and we went our separate ways. And with time, our Wamboy Moshina became Mary Karani. But who is like God? For technology brought us back together about 26 years later. And we now run a robust WhatsApp group for our class. It was absolutely wonderful to reconnect as adults and be met with the same radiance from Wamboi, and she had extra. Our last in-person reunion was in February this year, and of course Mary was there. She never missed our reunions. We had such a wonderful time. One of the last things we remember was Mary organizing for us a video of us singing our school song. Oh, such memories. How we wish we spent more time together, Mary. And now we address Mary, an ode to Mary Wamboi Mushina Karani. Wamboi, sunshine itself, beautiful, insightful, and witty. Wamboi, you loved on us and was always ready to pour yourself into our lives. You never held back. We shall be reeling from this for a long time to come. We are disoriented. Allow us to lament. How can life be so fickle? We thought we were raring to go. Who will keep the group animated? Oh, Wamboi, Wamboi. The Alliance girls, class of 92 is in mourning. A giant tree has fallen. Wamboi, our ever smiling sister, always cheering us on. Her soft voice, mischievous smile. Oh, Wamboi, we mourn you. And so we say to you, Wamboi, our sister, our friend, we shall say our goodbyes when we finally get round to saying them. But today is not the day. We celebrate you. Thank you for teaching us to laugh at ourselves. Thank you for, be, for being, bringing cheer to our lives. Rest in peace, Wamboi. May your light keep shining brightly. You will be sorely missed from your sisters, Alliance Girls, class of 92. Now, every time our class met in reunion, we always sang our school song and would like to sing our school song one last time with, to bid our sister farewell.
Amen. Thank you so much. Um, class of 90, 90? 92. Yeah, these are the I went to Alliance people who don't allow us to breathe on social media. They look like this in person. Let's appreciate them. They are actually no more people. <laughs> Thank you so much for for coming to comfort with the family of your dear friend. The Lord richly bless you. Um, for the honor of the vehicle with registration number KCX801Y, please attend to your vehicle um, urgently and also KAU409F. I repeat, KCX801Y, please attend to your vehicle, KAU409F. Um, and God will bless you. And for those to whom this announcement does not bother at all, may the Lord remember us also one day. Amen. We want to welcome uh, our brother Steve Chege, um, who joins us from, um, I think, from South Africa, a good friend to Martin and the family, and we'd also be able to speak on behalf of um, just some of the friends um, and schoolmates Let's appreciate our, our brother Steve. And uh, I also understand he was the best man in Martin's wedding, right? Karibu sana. Good afternoon, church. Um, so I'm not a South African, I'm a Kenyan. <coughs> and um, um, I'm happy to be here to support my brother Martin. Um, I'll speak more about Martin, and through Martin, I came to know Mary. And uh, I've known Martin now for what, 30 years? Yeah. And church, um, at some point, Martin and I did not have our current hairstyles. We were young men with boxes, and if Martin had a box, mine was bigger than his. <clears throat> and it is around that time that uh, he met Mary and they started courting, because he married quite, quite young. In fact, he was a pioneer for us. We had just finished university, we were young men, and then Martin said, there's a serious matter that we need to discuss. And then we had seen a very fine uh, lady with him, and then he sat us down and said, we've got to do a wedding. Um, we had no clue how these things are done. There were things that happened to some people who are older and who are more responsible than we were. But Martin, we know him, and that's why many of us are here. Um, he's a gentle leader. Uh, we sat down. Uh, we knew it was a good purpose. And as young as we were, I think we were able to put together a very splendid wedding. And those of you who attended it uh, all those many years ago in 2000, uh, we enjoyed the dancing and the celebration of the union between Martin and Mary. And from there, they started their great family. Matthew came first, then Michael, and later on Mark. And throughout all that time, for those of us who are ever able to visit Martin's home, we felt the warmth and the love that Mary was. Because that is what she was. She was a true mother. Um, <clears throat> Very God-fearing. There was no meal that started without a prayer. And you could always feel, you know, the closeness that she had um, to the word. And I think she was a great support to Martin. And um, on my own behalf and on behalf of the many guys who are here, uh, when, when Martin told me this on Saturday, I honestly felt as if I had lost my own wife. That's how I described it to him. I actually had to call my wife and ask her, where are you? Um, it could not have happened to, you know, a better family or a better person than Martin. Um, but we all know that we all have our own contracts with God. The date and the time is not known to us. But he has promised us that if we believe in his word, we shall rise again. So Martin, I'm just here representing so many guys. I've seen... Dr. Buya here, Nish, I've seen, you know, so many guys between now and yesterday. And all of us as men, we shall stand with you. My prayer is for the ladies, the, our classmates from Alliance, the fellow parents from Light Academy, and all the other institutions, the mothers. Stand with Martin. 
stand with the boys. They're in their teenage years, in their early 20s. This is a very delicate time in their lives, and the boys need their moms. We are there to provide some sort of leadership, but those really um, strong directions that people take in life come from our mothers. So for the women here, do find time to spend time with these young boys. Martin, Polesana, everyone who was in the lineup, I know they're all over the place. They have sent me their messages, and we shall be here with you now, and we shall be here with you after. So once again, on behalf of all the guys, Polesana, thank you, church, for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Steve. God bless you. Thank you for being a good friend and also available for the family at this time. Our sister Mary also did actively serve right here at Sitam Valley Road. She served in the community, um, that's the Sunday school. She was one of our Sunday school teachers in grade three. And as our HOD comes before he makes his remark, I also want to acknowledge our Sunday school uh, pastor who's here with us, Reverend Lucy Moller, and just invite her to make one or two um, comments and remarks and God will bless you, Karibu. Let's appreciate our pastor. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, before our HOD comes to give a tribute on behalf of the ministry, let me just uh, ask the Sunday school teachers to kindly stand. Uh, because this tribute you are giving to um, as a ministry, I want to say that um, Mary was one of those teachers that I will dearly miss in this ministry. Uh, at Sitam Valley Road where we teach the children. He was a teacher with a different, um, very different in, in, his, in her ministry uh, to the body of Christ. Many times when we went with her for Hope's Camp, she would, she would just make the place vibrant. She opened her home for many things for the ladies gathering, for the girls, you know those things of baby showers and bridal showers we did in her house, free of charge and giving us a lot of food and ensuring that we are comfortable. She was very generous in the ministry. You know, we utilized her car. Every time we went for Hope's Camp, all those errands we did, we used, we used her car without even her complaining. So as a ministry, we are mourning. Every time we'd meet at the classes and the corridors, she'd laugh and just put that smile on us and reminding us, the young uh, parents, on how to box our children and put them on a straight road, just the way she was boxing her boys. And for that, we are just praying that the Lord will comfort you. Also on behalf of the youth ministry, um, where we serve with Pastor Moffat, our lead and our and precious call, Pastor Precious call, we just want to let you know, uh, boys, that we are with you and the Lord will comfort you even in this season and we shall stand with you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Allow me to just read one scripture because for Mary, I have a really personal um, touch with her and um, the Lord is comforting us. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 2, the Bible says, it is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting. For death is the destiny of every man. The living should take this to heart. I want to tell us, mourners, each and every one of us, that as long as Jesus tarries, this is the way for all of us. As we pray that we live to the fullness of the years that God has given to us, let us work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. For we do not know the day that the Lord Jesus will come for our spirit. Thank you. HOD, please. Buona Sifiwe. Uh, I don't want to take so much time. I know we've had time to condole with the family, various ministries. So allow me to recognize the groups that have been involved. I, at the onset, I want to convey our condolences sympathies uh, on behalf of the non-pastoral community of Sitam, Sitam wide. Uh, Martin, the boys, Matthew, Michael, and Mark, uh, Pastor Mze, Mama, Ole. Nobody knows the day nor the hour. It came abrupt. Teacher Mary was supposed to be teaching class the Sunday. She 
passed on on Saturday. So may I recognize the Upendo Safari Group? This is a safari group that uh, our late sister belonged to. Where are you? Just you could stand a wave. Upendo Safari Group. Thank you, Poleni. Uh, then we have WM. I didn't get the name of the specific group. Women Ministries, representatives. Okay, they're all around. Okay, God bless you, Pauline. Oh, thank you. That's our leader teacher. Uh, sorry, not teacher, <laughs> but Mam Lea. Thank you. Uh, then we have the youth group. I, I think these are all categories. We have the Teens Church. We have uh, YP, and we have the Youth Church representatives. Yes. Thank you, Pastor, and your team. God bless you. Then, of course, the Children Ministry has been recognized. So ours is to say, Pole, nobody asks for an extra hour. We saw that in the Bible of a king who asked for more time, and we knew the outcome. This is how it has come, and we receive it as it is, and we can only commend you to the Lord. May God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, HOD Philemon. Let's appreciate him with a clap. Asante sana. I just also like to recognize the presence of uh, the Back to the Roots group, BTR. Um, if you're here, would you just wave so that we could acknowledge you and then we'll... Ah, Asante sana, I see the wonderful ladies. Let's appreciate them. We'll, I'm told you have a song. We will be considering that towards the tail end of our program. Um, we would like to, at this point in time, um, hear tributes from the families that are represented here. Um, and I want to call Uncle Tara, um, I think together with Auntie Joyce, who will come and just introduce the larger family. You can just make mention of them as they stand, the cousins, the aunts, and the uncles. Um, Uncle Tara, please, if you could join me here. Karibu uh, sana. To 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 mention the, 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 the family members that are here. Um, Amen. And then as we'll be moving from there as I guide, as we get to also hear from Mary's parents who are in our midst this afternoon. Karibu sana, Anko. Yes. Adio. Good afternoon, everyone. Now, before I say something, let me ask our cousins and the other close relatives to stand. Wherever you are, don't come here. So these ones are the ones who have managed to come here today, but the rest are up country waiting for the body. So let me invite my cousin Joyce to come and say a word and then I, I finalize. Joyce. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Beba mkono wako Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mary ndiye amelala. Na amelala kwa upendo wa Yesu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mary ni mtu wa furaha. Asante kwa wote wamefika kutusaidia hii msiba. Mungu ambariki. Wengi wenu mmewacha kazi zenu. Mungu awabariki. Na muongezee. Mary amelala. Tukifuya na vyema tutakutana na Mary. Mary ni anti yangu ya furaha sana. Akiniona na nikaribisha na furaha na shangwe na vigelegele. Nimehuzunika Mungu amweke mahali pema. Nikifanya vyema tutakutana na Mary. Na wale wote wamefika Mungu ambariki. Kwa majina ni Joyce Msembe. Mary ni anti yangu. Mati ni na familia yako pole. Mungu awafariji. Nyao tumbarikiwe. So as you, as you have heard, my name is Tara Karani. Mary is my daughter-in-law. When she joined our family, everybody received her with the open arms. And since then, she has been a role model in our family. So it was on Saturday morning when Martin called me with the sad news of her demise. 
So I received it with a profound shock, and I shared it with the, uh, with the few relatives. And then I left for here, and I have been with the family to date. So I want to thank the, ch the church for the big role they have played in holding the family together. Now, lastly, I want to ask the church to pray for us as a family, even as we leave for home in Vihiga County tomorrow. Asante, sir. Thank you, Uncle Tara. God bless you. Asante sana. Um, we would like to, at this point, invite um, Mary's parents who are with us, Pastor Peter Muchina, together with your wife, Janet Muchina. Um, if, if you can join me um, up here, we will really appreciate so that we could get to hear from you or if you have representatives that would like to speak on your behalf. Please karibuni sana, uh, Pastor Peter, together with your wife, Janet. Amen. And as they do that, um, we, in a little while after them, we'll also be inviting the nuclear family, led by our brother Martin, who will come and just share their hearts with us. And I believe the Lord will richly bless us. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate our mom and dad, together with their friends, and encourage them as they come. Amen, amen, amen. Karibuni sana. Karibu sana, mom. Amen. She has I got her when I was a young girl. And I want to say thank you, Jesus, as I stand here in front of this congregation. She has not let us down. She has stood with Christ all the days of her life. And she has done so much for God. I can't explain it all. And when I would just go down Kitogo, she would say, Mom, you have to stand for Christ. And uh, Mary and Martin, have given us a beautiful grand, grandsons, Matthew, Michael, and Mark. And I say, thank you. Don't change. Stand with Christ. And God will show, show you great things and take you places. So Mary, my daughter, I love her. I love Martin. I can't tell you what they have done for us. Of late, I was sick in Dogo. Martin, Martin started of, st talked of me doing an insurance. I didn't know what it is. It's like two weeks ago. And that family is good. Even, even if Zabron is not here, even if mom is not here, Patricia, you have to stand together. You have to love each other, regardless of what happens. And uh, I want to say, I want to thank the Lord. This far they have gone, this far he has brought us, and the best is yet to come. I'll give one example, then I stop. Last week she told me, Mom, you, in, in the family, I want you to stand. My sisters, my husband, Akena Karani, and Martin. I'm saying this so that you hear. She told me, Mom, you have to stand for God. 
in all circumstances. And she asked me, do you, are you really so, you know, as you grow under the, the mind and even what you do, you are not so fast. She told me, you have to be fast. You have to teach my sons to be fast. You have to teach Martin and even my, uh, my, uh, my husband. She told me, you have to boast. If you have anything to be proud of, I am so proud of you, you are all here. She told me, if you have to, to boast, you are not boasting for God. You are not standing for God. She told me, ma'am, you have to boast for Jesus Christ. Nothing else matters. That's what she told me. And I want to say she did it. She did it. She said, and then she would wake up very fast, go to teach Sunday school, go to the ministries for, for her groups. She taught Akina Matthew with the Jerry to, to sing for Christ, to continue and not to give up. And I, I myself, I want to thank God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says, whoever believes in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's where I stand. I know she, she, she believed in God, and she has, it, she, she, not she will have eternal life. She has eternal life. Because as many, she was the one telling me, as many as believed in him, like you are here, you are believers, that's why you are here. As many as believed in him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. And I know we have it, I know she had it, and I know you have it. That's why you are here this particular day. I don't have much to say. I have some other two kids I expect them to see them here. We have waited for them. They haven't reached. They are on their way. They are in the States, and they are coming. They are on their way, and we are together with them, isn't it? And we bless God and say God will bring them safely, and uh, he, he has a purpose. He has a plan. He has a destiny for all of us, for Mary and for our children. Hakuna atapotea yule anamini Yesu because anasema yeyote atamwamini atapata ufalme wa Mungu. And as as my daughter lies there, I know she's with God and I know Martin you don't have to fear. The best is yet to come. Don't fear. Stand with your family. We shall stand with you and you make it you are strong. You're a wonderful man. I want to say thank you. I can't forget Akina Patricia, who are the sisters, Kerry, you all, Kerry and, uh, and uh, Patricia and the young children in the family. You will make it. We shall stand together. And one of, when one of us is taken, God, God knows you can make it. So I want to wish my daughter, I don't know what, what happens there, but I know she loved God. She told me, Mom, please go to church and stand for Christ. Last week, just stand. You, I can't see the frame burning on you. And that was not hypocrisy. She told me, I teach Sunday school from Valley Road with all my heart. I've never seen them sing, but I knew she stood for Christ completely. And her family is the same. Matthew is singing, Michael is standing, Ma and Mark and Martin is just a wonderful son. I have nothing to, to say about him. He's wonderful. I got sick the other day. He took me quickly to the hospital and he started saying, you better than do the right things. Martin. And I know we are blessed. So, sina mambo mengi ya kumuambia, mubarikiwe, na mujue, ibo nasema about Martin, diyo munatakiwa muwe. Muonekane, alikuwa kiniambia, go show yourself to God. Anafurahia, kuja kanisani. Thank you very much. Mungu wa bariki.
Kuhanaisu asifiwe. Praise the name of Jesus. I stand here. I'm Peter Mushina Murioki. I stand here on behalf of what we would call the Mount Kenya family, part of the family. And uh, that includes Nyeri, Kirinyaga, and Meru. And if you have come from those places, may I ask that you stand wherever you are. Yes, we have brothers and sisters and the friends and colleagues from those places. And uh, I just want to ask the congregation to acknowledge my relatives. <laughs> you may be seated. There are different categories of relatives. Some are clan members, the Mbari members, the family members, as well as the in-laws. I stand here as a father. I want to mourn for my daughter. It has not been an easy journey. We called one another on Friday and we promised to meet on Saturday to transact some business and issues that needed to be sorted out. It was a profound shock for me to receive a call early in the morning to go to the hospital. I thought it was an issue of admission, but in course of the narrative that followed, I came to understand that my daughter had passed on. I did not know I have tears. Cried for only a few times as an adult. Cried in Chicago because I was very lonely. I cried in Jerusalem one morning because I woke at the wrong time. It seemed as if it was daytime, but uh, all the people were sleeping. I went to the streets and there was no one. And I thought, Christ came in my sleep. <laughs> I'd raptured the church <laughs> and I have been left. I cried myself back to sleep to wake up to a noisy city. But I thought, wow, considering uh, the subjects that I had been teaching wherever, I should have known better, should have known the latitude, the longitude, the price and the setting of the sun. We can be fooled by circumstances of life. And I have shed tears, this time tears I didn't know that I had. I have discovered I have a big well of tears. I want to lead a tribute as a father to my, for my daughter. I have entitled this tribute, Mary Wambo Imoshina was God's good gift to us. And I want to say, my, God good, my good God gave Janet and I a good gift to nurture and for her to mature us in our marriage and family relationships. This is none other than our firstborn daughter, Wamboi, given to us to love, to cherish, and to nurture. And children nurture the parents more than you could imagine. If you would only look carefully, you would realize that she was God's gift to you too, whoever you are, whatever number you may be, as has been attested in the testimonies and tributes given in this place. Number one, God's common grace placed his gift to us into the context of our culture. So, as parents, we called her Wamboi. Wamboi signified a daughter 
and a mother to many, a builder of community, and particularly God's community. Traditional community, the ancestors built the Amboi clan. But I have heard your testimonies that she was involved in building a clan for heaven. She was a leader. The Amboi are reputed as singers, singers of songs, and leaders in dancing. She is one who had unlimited energy, energy that distills harmony wherever she happened to be. A beauty from her many talents and according to Akasha, stripes of a zebra, jage, meshage, she would work out works of beauty, honor, and so on. And definitely Mary Wamboi was well organized. From the same name, we called her Chiamboi, she who possesses the goats. Thus, she was an incubator and a creator, not a consumer of wealth. She was an entrepreneur. You could call her Keboi, a strong tool with which to smash things so as to create and accomplish goals. You could call her Keboika, one who, like a zebra, marches steadily on for long distances and therefore a strong and enduring person, enduring person, enduring person. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Revelation says she endured in many circumstances of life. Of course, from the same name, she is Iboi, a column of smoke that rises to the cloud level. Here we have a daughter, a person who can never, ever be put down. Since she was a Christian, a born-again Christian, nothing, nothing will put my daughter down. But really because she is in the arms of love, the arms of our, her maker, even our Lord Jesus Christ. Even in her death, Wambui is exalted to God's greater glory. Amen? Number two, we as the parents also called her God's gift to us, Rakenia. Rakenia, a name that is rarely used, but even her grandmother was known as Rakenia. Rakenia, one who gardens, pleases, and gives joy to others. She was a joy maker. You have said it even before I spoke. She is a Mokenia the tree itself, whose branches were used for kindling fire and for building a granary, especially. And I see they signifying a homemaker. And Wamboi was truly a homemaker. Generally, in her life, she was characterized by joy and making others joyful. She was Ikenia, a scented leaf and a flower used in purification of the people. She was present in order to benefit others. And even in her death, Wamboi is present to her maker and to the one who seeks to see her as present. Number three, God's special grace called her, saved her, 
and placed his giftings into Mary so that she would pour the same into the lives of others in service that endures to eternity. Wamboi, Wamboi's given name was Mary, as you know very well. It speaks of our parental desire, hope, and expectation that she would become a mother. She would mother many into Christ-likeness. By his means of grace, God called Wamboi to salvation and to church service as you have attested. Service through faith. I notice with all due respect or protocols observed, I travel in many parts of Eastern of Africa and many churches are basing their ministries on works, 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 including works of fasting to death. But like Mary, we are all called to salvation by faith. And then the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Service through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord enabled my daughter to learn that lesson. And I praise the name of the Lord. Now God has called Mary, Wambui Mushina, to himself. By dying, she has shed her flesh and blood so as to be in the presence of the Lord. She personally believed in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8 that in being away from the body, its hearts, temptations, and weaknesses is to be at home with the Lord. And what we have here is her body. Her soul and spirit are with the Lord. And there is nothing, nothing, nothing anyone could ever do to change that. And even her body, in as much as it will decay, there is nothing, nothing anyone can do to change the fact that it belonged to a saint. Praise the name of the Lord. Mary was not a wicked person and has thus listed in the Lord to wait for her final call to glorious perfection in the resurrection. Mary anchored her soul in the haven of rest. She will sail the white seas no more. The tempests may sweep over the wild and stormy deep. But in Jesus, Mary is safe evermore. I, Mary's dad, thank God for the gift is gift to us for this day that we live in. I thank God and our Lord Jesus Christ for in him we shall meet Mary Wamboi again on that day. And may God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate them some more. Such beautiful tributes from Mary's mom and dad. Isn't it wonderful to hear that Mary indeed left a mark? And perhaps this is why scripture calls us to go to the house of mourning because we get to reflect on our own lives. And we pray that when the role is called up yonder on us, that we will have left such an indelible mark of impact in the lives of those around us. Amen. Buona sifiwe. Um, my sincere apologies, I did miss um, to mention um, Dr. Kiendi, who was supposed to just introduce the, the larger family. Um, and I'll just ask, because the parents have already spoken, if Dr. Kiendi can stand up together with the cousins, aunties, and uncles, so that the congregation can just see and acknowledge you, that would be wonderful. The cousins, are they around? All right, I've been asked to ask Dr. Kendi to please come. Um, are you there, Daktari? Please come briefly so that we can get to invite Mary's nuclear family. Um, 
Is Dr. with us? Great, it's okay. Thank you, thank you. Let's appreciate um, our family here. Amen. At this juncture, I want to invite Mary's nuclear family, led by our brother and friend Martin, um, together with these three amazing, wonderful boys. Gentlemen, please, if you may, Karibuni Sana, we'd like to hear from you as you share your hearts with us. Um, and we are all here to encourage and stand with you. Let's appreciate them as they come to just share their hearts together with us. Amen. Karibuni Sana, um, in whichever order you will will agree to go, we are ready to have you. Great. Um, praise God, Church. My name is Matthew Kalani, the first one to Mary. She's my mom. Um, for me, I'd say a mother is a great gift that that God gives gives all of us. Um, in the Bible, when when God created Adam, He saw He saw that He, he was alone, and, and God said, "It is not good for." For man to be alone, and and so he said, um, I will make him a helper. And he he reached out to, into his rib, and he formed he formed the woman, and and God, and and God put. He put he put his breath in, into the woman. And, and and presented him and presented her to 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 Adam, and Adam called her. Eve said, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. All of us in this place um, have come from a mother. And I want to encourage each and every one of us to always show love to one another. Because the Bible says that the greatest commandment, love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. So I'll talk about my mother. She gave birth to me in the year 2000, December 8th, 2000. Um, it's, it's amazing how time flies because 22 years is, it's, it's not, um, it's not a short time, but it's also not a long time. So over the years, my mother has always loved me. Um, I remember when I was younger, when she, she, she worked in Postel, um, so she used to travel a lot to Mombasa. So she, she used to go with me. Um, she'd buy me gifts. Um, just take care, take care of me. And she really loved me. She loved all of us. Um, when I was six, she got Michael. Um, and when I was nine, she got Mark. And all through the years, she's always loved us. She's always taken care of us, um, you know, cooked for us, played with us. There's a time um, I, I remember talking to her then. She was like, what, what uh, she said, that like she she'd love to when she when she was younger, or rather when she when she gave birth to me, um, there was there was a choice or rather. She she had pre she preferred to stay with me, and you know play with me rather than maybe go to the gym, and work out because she, she said she, she gained quite a lot of weight when she got me. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, that's love sacrificing for. For the people you love. Um, just recently, um, let's say a month a month ago, um, I was coming to serve here in church. Um, it, it, it was actually just this April. Um, I think the third Sunday of the month, the third or second Sunday, 
then um, I was coming to church early in the morning. Then I asked, uh, okay, normally I'd take an Uber, but then I was like, ah, let me ask my mom to take me. Then she was like, ah, Twende. Then I don't know why I asked, but on the way, um, so we started talking. Then I remember when, we, when we, just before we reached, I asked my mom, so what's the greatest like secret in life? Uh, then, then she told me um, CBR. So CBR is consistent Bible reading. Um, it's it's a program a program that we do here in church. Um, I joined when I think March. Yeah, in in March. She's actually the reason that I joined it. Um, she was like Matthew, go, go get me the link. I want to join online. And then I was like, so let me go get me. Then I sent. Um, I was I was talking to. One of, one of my um, lecturers over here, she, she's my supervisor. Um, then after I was done, um, I, I came back in, they were winding up on the, on the meeting. And then they were like, so let's now form groups. So the person who I, I, I asked that for the link, I sat next to him, he's called Jared. Then um, we, uh, we, form, we formed the group. So over, over that, uh, like that period of time, since March, we've been doing the CBR with her. Like, so it's basically you wake up at five in the morning. Um, you start with one chapter a day. The, the goal is to create a habit of reading the Bible. So you start with one chapter a day. Um, so you read, you read through the chapter. Um, you, you, you take out the facts. So what, what, what is God saying here? And then you take out the insights. What, um, what am I learning from? What, what insights am I getting from it? And then they did. So what, as a result of reading this, what did will I do? Yeah, so uh, that's one thing that I will always keep with me, that I, I, I will consistently read, read the Bible, consistently pray, because we read the Bible, we pray for at least 10 minutes. Then we, we memorize scripture. The scripture that we memorize, it's the one that God brings into, into our hearts when, when in trouble, waters, like now, um, I know it won't be an easy journey, but I have Jesus, and because of that, I know that he'll see me through. This morning, there's a, there's a song that came to mind. Um, what gift of grace is Jesus, my redeemer? Na, 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 I have no more for heaven now to give. Mm -hmm, my righteousness and freedom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, to this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. Oh, my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how sweet and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. So, there would be a lot that I can say, but um, I think I'll finish with that because... My mom would, would like us to, if she was here, okay, she's here, so not in the, in the body, but I know that one message that she'll want, like each and every one of us to have, just as my grandfather has said, hold on to Jesus. He's everything in life. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything, but you have, if you have Jesus, you have everything. Be blessed. Praise God, church. Praise God, church. I was asked to write a tribute about my mother. But where do you start when writing a tribute about the one who gave birth to you? That is from my perspective. And from another person's perspective, this was a child, a friend, and even a wife. Sometimes you may not know what to do because what she has done is, is a lot. Perhaps it might be poetry, as my grandfather has uh, illustrated. Perhaps it might be singing, as my elder brother has wonderfully done. And perhaps even sometimes the tears speak magnitudes. And sometimes just silence in itself is a wonderful tribute. But all I can say is just a tip of the iceberg, because my mother has done abundantly. I mean, the things she has done, outspoken. I, I cannot emphasize on them. And who knows how long it will take me to narrate her entire life story. 
But so I will just give you a tip of the iceberg of who my mother was. My mother gave birth to me at Mata Hospital. When she was there, the umbilical cord, umbilical cord had wrapped around my neck. And therefore, every time she pushed out, you know, she was choking. I was being choked by the umbilical cord. And so she's pushing and, and you know, she's in pain. I'm in pain. You know, we can't, both can't breathe. <laughs> And so, uh, as she, you know, then after that, what happened is, you know, they realized that, that the umbilical cord was what was restricting me from coming out. And so what they decided to do was they were going to cut it, and then after cutting it, uh, they would now remove me. But before doing that, they had to pray, because the umbilical cord is what uh, enables gaseous exchange and food to be passed to the baby from the mother and all that. And so the nurse and my mother prayed. And after praying, what happened was uh, the procedure was done, the umbilical cord was cut, and then I was removed. When I was removed, I was blue because of the lack of oxygen. And then what happened was I had drunk the fluids, uh, which were poisonous. And you know, I, I should have been dead. But I, uh, by God's grace, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> my grandmother. My grandmother, who's also a doctor, Dr. Gashiri, she came right in the nick of time as the nurse was right about to resuscitate me, you know, which was not supposed to be done. So she rushed in without washing her hands, so my mother would say, and, and then, you know, did the, the procedures that were necessary, you know, put the tubes inside to remove the fluids and all that. In, uh, after that, what happened was uh, I was put in an incubator. In the incubator, I turned yellow, uh, apparently. I don't know how, but yeah. <laughs> then after that, I was put in blue light, whereby I now got my skin color. But, uh, <laughs> but, after that, but it was a long procedure. And then through all this, my mother was with me. You no, know, I remember she, you know, she, okay, I don't remember because I was young. <laughs> but she, but she was, I know she was there, you know. So she was there, you know, she would come and visit me. My father would really work hard, you know, just to get me out of there, you know, because back then, you know, they, you, they had to work from uh, down there, you know. So it, it was really no joke. But my mother was with me throughout. You know, even when I was growing up, you know, I was afraid of the dark when I was young. And then, you know, I would shout, Mom! <laughs> and then, you know, uh, she would come, and then I tell her, check under the bed, in the cupboard. And, and then yeah, between, yeah, between my eyes and me, I know I saw something. Like that. <laughs> but she, she was there, and, you know, she was always there when I called upon her. And now, you know, just to conclude, I had not seen her body um, on Saturday up to, I think it was Tuesday. You know, and so I asked my father to go see the body. Because, I mean, I had to see my own mother, you know, I did not believe it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, yes, you know, I've had it, but I have to see it. I, I was like a doubting to Thomas, but I knew that I had to see her body. At the end of the day, she was my mother. And so, uh, my father did the necessary procedures and, you know, we went to see her body. Now, upon seeing her body, my grandmother as well, Dr. Kashiri, had said that she looked peaceful. But I asked myself, you know, how did she really look? I mean, what is this peaceful? Is the peaceful just a stern face, just there peacefully? Or was it a smile? And I was like, okay, so it might be a smile, but you know, is it really a smile or, okay, we shall see. And so the day came and I went, and believe it or not, my mother had a smile on her face. I mean, I was not expecting that, but you know, that in itself, is the, uh, that in itself speaks magnitudes. Because as my father was taking my mother to the hospital, my mother was saying, Jesus, save me, Jesus, save me. And you know, after seeing her body, that smile on her face really does speak to me. And therefore, I, I know who I have believed in. Every time uh, I would go to school, before I go to school, uh, as I'm running after the bus, as it's leaving me, you know, she would stop me and say, Michael, uh, you know, she made me memorize this. You know, uh, it's this verse that goes, uh, uh, it goes, uh, <laughs> okay, sorry, my emotions are getting, making me carried away. But if the uh, scripture was that, uh, oh, I've remembered, okay. Uh, so it was, uh, it was what, okay. 
Okay, so basically, yeah, let me paraphrase. Thank you, thank you. Let me paraphrase. Then maybe you can remind me. So, uh, oh, okay, it has come. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so nothing is too difficult for me. Thank you. Praise God, church. So, uh, as for me, I don't have much to say, but I wrote a, a short tribute, which I'm going to read. Uh, to mom, words cannot express the pain and anger in me. You left a deep void in me that no one on earth can fill. Why did God have to take you so early, at such a young age? We had a whole life ahead of us, all the many things we planned together, from sneaking tea into school so that I could be drinking it, to buying that house you always dreamed of. If I'm being honest, I don't believe that any of this is happening. It all seems surreal. I'm still in shock. Uh, nevertheless, I've been able to thank God for the moments we shared together. You meant many things to me, Mom. You are my... You are my best friend, my comforter, my teacher, my mentor, my protector, and most of all, you are my role model. If I, if I were to continue this list, with this list, the words would be endless. Uh, my mother had a special way of making everyone she met feel special, like they were the only person in the world who mattered. For those lucky enough to meet her, you could testify this for yourself. She had a heart of gold, uh, her kindness, loving nature, friendship, and compassion was unmatched. It could not be compared to anything else in the universe. It would be a sin for me to make this speech and not mention her bubbly and contagious laugh, smile, and remarkable sense of humor. Any time she entered the room, she would be the light of it. Of course, like any other family, we had our ups and downs, but we would always come back stronger than we were before. She developed a mentality in me of always learning from my mistakes and of that of others. I will never forget the memories God blessed me to have with her. I will always keep them locked in a safe deep in my heart. No amount of words can be able to summarize a life here on earth. Though it may seem short, she lived her life to the fullest. She planted fruitful and prosperous seeds in us with a deep foundation in Christ. My hopes and beliefs are that these seeds which she planted will sprout into ginormous fruitful trees. Though she may be away from us in body, I believe that she is right here with us right now, watching over us in spirit. And I believe that one day we will reunite with her in heaven. Mom, I love you and always will. Uh, and I could never be more grateful for the times we share together. I will end my short tribute with the last word she said to me. I love you. Uh, praise the Lord Church. Yeah, my name is uh, Martin Karani. Um, I'm, I'm the husband to uh, Mary. Yeah, I, I, th I think if maybe uh, somebody had said uh, five days ago, uh, I'd find myself in a position like this. I, I think I would not have believed them. Uh, I think for me, I'm still in shock uh, because uh, it's something that has happened very suddenly. Um, 
I, I've known Mary for since our campus days. I was at Nairobi University. Uh, she was at uh, Kenyatta University. Uh, what actually brought us together uh, is uh, my passion. Uh, those who know me uh, knew that I was very, uh, uh, I was very keen on tennis. I was a player. I was, uh, yeah, and and that's how we met. Uh, because Mary used to play for KU, and I represented Nairobi University. I think I was the captain then, and uh, we were having inter-university uh, tournament. And uh, of course, I was playing for my university, and uh, she was playing for hers. Uh, and uh, for some reason, she was cheering me on, uh, despite the fact that I was playing against uh, her university. I, I found that very odd, actually, yeah, because uh, there were terraced, uh, terraces. She was sitting there, and uh, I was, uh, you know, I was playing, and uh, yeah, we were playing at their university. Yeah, so it made her look very awkward uh, among her teammates. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that's when I developed an interest in Mary. And uh, within a few months, our our friendship uh, blossomed, uh, leading shortly after university uh, to marriage. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm very different from Mary. Uh, I think when they say opposites attract, I, I think there's some truth in it. Um, I'm, I'm highly introverted, um, so I always like taking a back seat, you know. Uh, you know, like in an occasion like this, I'd probably come and sit at a corner somewhere, and I hope nobody will see me, yeah. I wouldn't want to, like, come in front. I, I, I don't like that, huh? yeah. But Mary is the exact opposite, huh? Yeah, as uh, they've said here, uh, she's the life of the party, you know. Uh, full of life, uh, full of vigor, full of, you know, wanting to give direction, uh, wanting to make things happen. Uh, I mean, it's the energy was just amazing, yeah? And uh, it, it has helped us in our marriage because I, I, I think um, the, 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 the three boys, I mean, Matthew, uh, Michael, and Mark, uh, They've, 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 I'm very proud of them. I mean, they are, you know, nowadays with all these, uh, you know, um, influences uh, around, uh, it's not easy to bring up uh, kids who are God-fearing. Uh, but she managed to do that uh, with all the three sons. All of them are well-behaved. All of them love the Lord. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think if there is something, uh, I remember the most, uh, it's how they, she loved the Lord. Yeah, uh, she may have been very loud, uh, but you know, like she'd wake up every day at uh, five o'clock uh, to read the Bible and pray. And you know, uh, it, it's something she did consistently. So even during uh, like Sundays, for instance, uh, she'd spend the whole day in church uh, because she'd start by uh, teaching Sunday school in the morning uh you know like uh, so she'd leave the house at eight and uh you know i remember like uh whenever she'd finished teaching uh which is around 11 11 15 she'd always call and say yeah martin where are you uh you know because uh, I, I come for the second service and uh, she would uh you know she'd always insist yeah martin you need to keep time you know uh you need to be here on time yeah, and even when, um, you know, she was teaching her, uh, I mean, she was not just limited to teaching um, um, uh, Sunday school here in church, uh, but she was also involved in BSF. I mean, I remember, like, our neighborhood kids uh, would know whenever Monday uh, came, uh, she'd be looking for them. So she'd always tell the mothers and the parents, you know, yeah, these kids need to be in BSF. Yeah, and she'd round up, you know, all these kids, uh, put them in a car, yeah, and then uh, take them to take them to church. Yeah, so I, I, I think uh, that had a profound of effect on the kids. And uh, I'm really proud, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of her. Uh, I, I, I don't know how... Um, I don't know how how to manage in, in such a situation, but I'm glad the foundation has been uh, put in place. Uh, I mean, because otherwise I would not know where to start. Yeah, uh, you know, on hindsight, um, I, I, I don't know, but you know, 
uh, she do interesting things in my opinion uh, in terms of like uh, teaching boys to cook yeah uh, for me I, I don't know I, I think maybe yeah you know we are from Vihiga and normally <laughs> Uh, yeah, par, yeah, yeah. It's it's not. I, I remember there was a time uh, during our wedding negotiations. Uh, you know, somebody. You know, uh, I was like, I'd gone to talk to Mary in the kitchen, and one of the uh, guys we were with, one of the older men, was asking, "What is it that you are doing there?" Yeah, men men don't go to the kitchen. Yeah, but of course Mary had a different point of view, and uh, all the boys know how to cook. Yeah, I, I still don't. I mean, I think the, yeah, yeah, the influence was not strong enough. Yeah, uh, but but I I I I, uh, I want to thank God for the many years that uh, is uh, is given us uh, with Mary. Uh, around two weeks ago, uh, I found it interesting. I had traveled. Uh, we have a business club, and uh, we had gone out of uh, out of town. Yeah, but uh, she gathered the boys and uh, said they were going to the studio uh, to take photos. Uh, now, uh, she's never done that for maybe 10 years or 12 years. Yeah, so what made her decide to go to the studio with the boys? I, 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 I don't know, honestly, yeah. But, but I found it, you know, you know, on hindsight, I don't know whether it was some sort of premonition yeah, where that you know they wanted to have like our last memories together. Yeah, um, of course it's unfortunate I was not in the photos. Yeah, but uh, I, I think I, I think there was something there. Yeah, uh, on Saturday, on Friday, Friday was the twelfth, twelfth uh, of May. Uh, I was with Mary, and uh, she came. I think she had a busy day, so she had meetings all round. Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe before I talk about the the, the the Friday, maybe I can take her talk about uh, briefly about the day before, which was Thursday. Yeah, we are all members of our Bible study fellowship. It's called uh, Upendo. Uh, we are led uh, by Auntie Jane, uh, Jenna Lumira. Uh, that this uh, the safari group has just been marvelous. Huh? The support is just out of this world. Yeah, but anyway, on 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 Thursday. As usual, Mary said, no, no, we have to go to Bible study. Uh, all of us go. When the boys are around, uh, the two boys who are in boarding, uh, when they're around, we all go to, uh, we all go. So uh, now this particular time, what happened is uh, we were meeting at a new place. Uh, uh, but what was amazing about the experience was that uh, our member, the son, is a professional chef. Yeah, so we had a meal that we've never had before. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was like, you know, like a five star, what you'd get in a five star hotel. Uh, and then again, you know, you think, I mean, this has never happened. I mean, like, yes, we do meals. I know uh, Mary introduced the, uh, you know, the thing of, uh, you know, instead of just having a cup of tea. Uh, why don't we just have a proper meal? You know, it's late, so why don't you have to? You don't have to go to cook. Uh, you'll come back and uh, yeah, you 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 come by and go and sleep. Huh? Yeah, but but this one was amazing. This was was was. I mean, uh, we've never had a meal like that. Yeah. So in a way, it was something of like a last supper. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you think about it, and we all had a good time, and you know, people are jolly. Yeah, but now on uh, was Friday, she makes supper. Um, we go and sleep at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, in the morning, uh, around 5 o'clock, the alarm uh, rings. Yeah, so it's like, you know, yeah, Mary has woken up to read the Bible and pray. Yeah, but this time she said, no, I'm not feeling well. Yeah, I'm struggling to breathe. Yeah, uh, Martin ran and get me some water. So that's what I did. You know, I ran downstairs, got her some water. Uh, a lot of it actually, but for some reason it was not enough. And uh, she kept saying that uh, she's feeling weak, so even standing was a big problem. Huh? Yeah. So that's when we realized that uh, we have a challenge here. Yeah. Uh, Mary is struggling to breathe. She's uh, not well. Yeah. I was actually very confused on what uh, what was happening. Yeah. She complained that it's very hot. She had to remove her. You know. Yeah. Uh, she was wearing a hoodie and all that. Yeah, so I, 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 I assisted her to the car, uh, got there, and uh, 
this guy, uh, the Ascaris, also helped us to put her in the car. So I rushed her to Nairobi Hospital. Uh, on the way there, she says, no, you have to roll down the windows uh, because uh, it's too hot and I'm not breathing, I need air. You know, she was gasping for breath. Yeah, this is around uh, maybe 5.30 or thereabouts. So as I drive to Nairobi Hospital, she keeps telling me, uh, you know, you need to drive faster, Martin, yeah? You need to drive faster, yeah? So her, she's naturally a very fast driver. Uh, personally, as I said, we are opposites, huh? yeah? So I never drive fast, yeah? And uh, she kept saying, Martin, yeah, drive fast, drive fast, you know? Yeah, and that's uh, really haunts me, yeah? So, um, we got to Nairobi Hospital, uh, the casualty department. Uh, immediately, I started hooting uh, to attract the attention of uh, uh, the nurses and uh, the staff there. Uh, so they came out and uh, asked, what is the problem? I said, yeah, Mary here is uh, struggling yeah, to breathe. So they ran and brought her wheelchair. Uh, she couldn't stand at this point. Huh? Yeah, and uh, she kept calling uh, Jesus' name. Huh? And uh, uh, they put her there, and uh, they wheeled her straight away to the resuscitation room. And uh, what they told us uh, was that the, uh, uh, they, they told me rather, because I was alone. Uh, actually, I didn't even have time to get Matthew. Matthew in our house, he sleeps in the basement. So, uh, you know, it was an emergency. I didn't have time to call him. Yeah, I'm sure he'd love to be there. Uh, but anyway, so she was uh, wheeled to the uh, resuscitation room and uh, they uh, started working on her. I mean, I knew there was a problem uh, seeing the way the nurses were running. Uh, they were literally running and there was so much activity. Yeah, so there were these guys who are, uh, you know, like doctors, nurses, I don't know, you know, so many guys. Uh, so they started working on her. They, they put a tube uh, to the lungs. Uh, to 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 you know to get uh, oxygen to the to the to the lungs, and then uh, when one of the nurses came out, I asked what is happening, and then she explained that uh, she's not in a very good position. Uh, her pulse is very low. Uh, they are trying to stabilize her. Yeah. Uh, so what I can do, I can go and uh, fill out the forms uh, so that uh, she can move to ICU. Yeah. So the process of filling out the forms uh, took a bit longer than usual, uh, simply because uh, Mary has never really been in hospital other than when she was giving birth to uh, these three kids. So they looked for her records, there was nothing. So I had to feel basically from scratch, yeah. But nonetheless, in the meantime, uh, the doctors were working on her, yeah. I could hear them pumping this, that sound, uh, you know, for CPR. Yeah, and then there was this noise, you know, uh, like a TTT sound. Uh, uh, but, but I noticed it's sort of like, a, it's like consistent in terms of its tone. Yeah, uh, I, I looked for people to call. I called uh, Kerry. I, I called, uh, I called, uh, I tried uh, the parents. I think maybe they're still asleep, but I still continue trying. So what happened is uh, at some point I heard that uh, somebody saying uh, 721. Yeah, so uh, shortly afterwards, uh, the doctor said he wanted to talk uh, to me, and uh, that's when they broke the news that, uh, yeah, uh, Mary was no more, yeah. Of course, it's a massive shock. Uh, so I asked what happened. They said they couldn't get the heart to beat anymore, yeah. It was very intermittent. They tried uh, CPR. They did all they could, but uh, yeah, it just didn't work, yeah. So, obviously, for us, you know, we are uh, deeply affected by that. Uh, we had to carry out a postmortem uh, just to understand, I mean, what is it that happened? I mean, you know, healthy people are not just supposed to die like that, you know? I mean, there must be something, yeah? So, when we did the CPR on Monday, uh, the pathologist confirmed uh, that the cause of death is uh, uh, something they call uh, pulmonary embolism, uh, which is basically a blood clot. So the clot went to the lungs and uh, she was not able to get in oxygen. And uh, because of that, you know, the body just started shutting down and there was nothing that they could do. Yeah, so I thank God for the life I've had with Mary. 
Uh, I have to say that without the support of the church, without the support of uh, our Upendo uh, group, our relatives, our committees, just out of this world, yeah, I never had to do anything, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, they've run the whole show. We had a fundraising yesterday. Uh, I mean, the turnout was amazing. Uh, the contributions were incredible. And we know how, you know, difficult times are at the moment. Yeah, so it's a sacrifice, yeah? Yeah, so, I mean, it tells me that, I mean, Mary touched many people's lives. And, uh, you know, she made an impact. And people are there for her and there for us during our hour of need. Uh, we, we are going to miss as a family. We are not quite sure how we are going to make it. Uh, but what you've done for us, I mean, is amazing. It's, 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 it's truly amazing. And, and I, I normally don't talk much, but I, I have to say that uh, we are truly blessed because of the support that you have given us. Yeah, and may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Martin, together with um, your wonderful children, Matthew, Michael, and Mark. Let's appreciate them. Yeah. Takes great strength to speak in such a manner about a beloved person in the family, but we continue to pray that God's grace and comfort will cover them all. Amen. Um, at this juncture, we are nearing really the end of our programming. I want to invite Wairimo Karani, who will be able to lead us through a tribute. Um, and as she does that, we'll be getting ready to give um, our offerings um, just immediately after. And uh, in Sitam, in such gatherings, all the offerings that are collected in this service go to help the family offset any bills and take care of any needs in their midst. So please feel free to give, and the Lord will richly bless you. Karibu, Wairimo. Good afternoon. Uh, it's really good to see uh, the support the family is getting. Uh, for um, my co-wife, Mary, uh, my sister. Um, so I'll just go straight to the eulogy. And uh, I know some programs have been circulated. There are some also on soft. So kindly, let's just um, read through. Uh, eulogy of the late Mary Wamboi Karani. Mary Wamboi Mushina Karani was born on the 3rd of September 1974 in Nairobi, the firstborn in a family of three children of Pastor Peter and Mrs. Janet Mushina. She was a sister to John and Sharon. She was the beloved wife of Martin Karani, a doting mother of Matthew Kidiavai, Michael Jubilee, and Mark Baraka. Mary was the daughter-in-law of the late Mze Zablon Karani and the late Mama Fanis Karani and a sister-in-law of Kerry uh, and Wairimo Karani, Desiree Morioki, Patricia Karani, and Andrew Karani. Mary was also an auntie to Candice, Jerome, Casey, Olivia, Ava, Zach, and a cousin and a niece to many. Education. Mary started her education at the age of five in Buruburu Kindergarten and then proceeded to Buruburu Primary School in 1981. Mary was a brilliant girl and when she sat for her Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, she appeared in the newspaper amongst the top 100 students in Kenya. And during that time, there was no leakage or technology, so the results were legit. Her excellent performance got her admitted to the prestigious Alliance Girls High School in Kikuyu in 1989. While a student at Alliance, Wamboi participated in many sports activities such as volleyball, tennis, hockey, badminton, and swimming. She excelled in art, and her art teacher uh, said she was one of the best students she has ever taught. A student truly gifted in drawing portraits. One boy also sang in the school choir. She taught Sunday school at the Musagitao Primary School, located just across the Alliance School. Small wonder when she joined Sitam years later, she enlisted in the Sunday school department to serve. One boy served for her Kenya certificate of secondary education 
in 1992. On completion of high school, Mary joined in the Kenya Polytechnic for a diploma in graphic design, qualifying in 1984. She immediately enrolled at Kenyatta University for a bachelor's degree in commerce, marketing, and business administration. Mary was one of the pioneer students of the new faculty of commerce. She majored in marketing, and the highlight of her student life was the inter ad student competitions that were being run globally by the International Advertising Association. Her out-of-the-box thinking saw her nominated as the association's creative director. In one of those competitions, dubbed the Milk Mustache, Kenya, Milk Mustache, Kenyatta University emerged topped in the ASEA region, which comprised of university, universities in Africa and South, Southeast Asia. Wamboy's genius contribution went a long way to secure that win, and the whole team enjoyed the prize money of a whooping $1,100, then adjusted for inflation. This is about $2,058 in 2023. Mary graduated in 1998. Being the hardworking woman she is, in the same year, she obtained her cert certified public accountants, CPA Part 1, Section 1 and 2, certificate from Strathmore University. A year later, she studied uh, marketing and got her diploma in marketing awarded by the London Chamber of Commerce. Over the years, Mary undertook various online IT professional certifications on networks, security, unified communications, database systems, and document management systems from the manufacturers such as Fortinet, Cisco, EMC Dell, Microsoft, Oracle, and HP to hone her skills family. Mary was an avid sports person. While playing tennis, she met the love of her life, Martin Karani, and they got married on 9th July 2000. Their beautiful wedding was held at Parklands Baptist Church. She blossomed into a doting but firm mother to her three boys. She attended many matter heart runs and it became a family affair. She was an exemplary wife to Martin and a great mother to her three sons. She totally cherished education and was instrumental in her son's excellent academic performance. She also applied the fivefold ministry in ensuring discipline was enforced. Work life. Mary was a hardworking and highly motivated professional. After graduation, she secured a job as an accounts executive for Unga Limited. She was rapidly promoted from an accounts assistant to accounts executive due to her exemplary performance and recognition of having excellent customer service skills and high integrity. In the year 2000, she landed a job as account manager with Yellow Pages, Kenya Postel Directories, where she worked for seven years. During this uh, period, Mary was awarded various superior performance awards, selling and advertising space to enterprise clients, mainly in the public sector, banking, insurance, and manufacturing, education, and transport sectors. Mary's outgoing personality led her to develop an impressive network of customers all over Kenya by building mutually beneficial relationships with CEOs, COOs, and CFOs. After her seven-year tenure with Yellow Pages, Mary moved on to work as trade and marketing manager with the T Board of Kenya for a period of 18 months. In this capacity, she was charged with the promotion and sales of Kenya's tea, both locally and internationally, and earned foreign exchange by generating over $500,000 in annual sales. In 2009, she secured a job with Lantec Africa Limited as their public sector 
account manager. Her personal revenue targets surpassed those of even the senior accounts managers that barely a year later, the company pro promoted her to manager sales and innovations. Mary then moved on to work as a sales specialist network integrating in April 2012 with Dimension Data Solutions, an international system integrator providing specialized IT infrastructure solutions. In this position, she carried out many projects such as building a data, data centers for clients and unified communication projects, among others. Solution footprints included local area networks, data center, build and operation, security, document management, unified communications, as well as support and maintenance. She was also involved in organization of dimensions, data uh, corp corporate social events with clients, hence increasing visibility and, pro and brand awareness. In 2014, Mary was recruited as a business development slash project manager by Ison Technologies, a Pan-African provider of end-to-end -end IT solutions. In this capacity, she spearheaded the East African business development role where she undertook business planning, market strategy initiatives, key account management, client acquisition and reporting. In her field of work, Mary used her extensive knowledge and skills to deliver customers' IT solutions aligned to her clients' business goals, objectives, and market needs. She audited her clients' IT environments and then sold and oversaw the implementation of customized, current, and optimized IT systems that enabled them to maximize profitability in their various market places a task she did with excellence. In 2017, Mary decided to work as an independent business development consultant, assisting entrepreneurs to set up small businesses, especially those established by women and the youth. She has been mentoring and coaching them to gain market share and ensuring they create brand awareness in their market segments. Uh, market segments participate and win in public procurement opportunities through bid and relationship management. She has trained them on sourcing, international payments, cash management, trade finance solutions, project management and debt collection. She has traveled within the region to promote her business. Her emphasis has been on strategy, formulation, sales, high quality presentations, deal making, product development, and marketing, and public relationships and capacity building. A Christian service. The Moshinas introduced Mary to the Christian faith as a young girl. She received Jesus as her personal savior and was baptized. She became a member of SITAM and ensured her children attended Sunday school. She served in the Sunday school department as a teacher in Sitam Valley Road. Mary was an active church member and belonged to many Christian groups, including VSF. Mary was an energetic, intelligent, creative person, an incredible human being. She had a beautiful smile for everyone. She had clarity of thought and action and a go-getter. She was a very generous person and enjoyed hosting people in her home. A case in point is hosting the safari group for two months, complete with a meal at the end of the Bible study. She has left such a wonderful mark in the hearts of those who knew her. Words fail to express who Mary was to many, outgoing, a people's person, very kind-hearted, and inclined to help the less privileged. She touched many lives and has left many positive memories that we live on, called home. In the early hours of Saturday, 13th May 2023, Mary complained of breathing problems and her husband Martin rushed her to Nairobi Hospital emergency section. 
Her condition deteriorated rapidly. The doctors did all they could to resuscitate her, but unfortunately, she passed away peacefully at 7.30 a.m. Her life of service abruptly ended and her candle went out. We know that she is with the Lord. She served tirelessly, a woman of many talents that we will forever miss. Fare thee well, Mary, until we meet again. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalms 116, verse 15. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking time to read the tribute for us. We want to, at this point, invite us to, um, to make our giving. Um, there's a pay bill number that we can use if you'd like to give through M-Pesa or mobile money. Um, and I think our sound team will be helping us to project that on the screens. The rest, um, we have ushers who will move around with uh, our, our offering bags. Please feel free to give to the family. And as I make the prayer, I want to invite the Sunday school team. Um, they are going to sing one song. And then they, as we will be giving, and right from there, we'll be inviting our senior pastor to just conclude this program for all of us. Amen. Buona sifiwe. Are we still together? Shall we pray as the Sunday school team please comes? Heavenly Father, we thank you. And as we give our offerings, Lord, we pray that you receive it with thanksgiving, that you will continue to comfort with this family and give us grace as we mourn together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are not ready, we can move. Please run. Thank you. If I could get the pay bill details, I can as well read them for us. Um,
Amen. Please help me appreciate this wonderful Sunday school teachers that taught together with Teacher Mary in our Sunday school classes. Thank you so very much and God bless you. Thank you for staying to this very end. I just want us to indulge us for a few more moments as we invite our senior pastor, Reverend Justice Mugambi, um, to come and, 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 and finish the remaining part of the program. We also have men and women of God in our midst, clergy, whom he'll be able to acknowledge and introduce to us. So please help me appreciate him as he comes to briefly share God's word with us. Amen. Thank you very much. Let me begin by appreciating our pastor, Cor, who has led us so well this afternoon. Thank you. And uh, Pastor Wedo, they have put, helped to put this program together. The Lord bless you. Uh, we also have other pastors. We have Pastor Moffat here, the youth pastor. Pastor Lucy has just left. Uh, from Sitam also, we have Pastor Martin Badu. Yeah, all the way from Sitam, Embu. We also have our, which is the Bishop Emeritus. That's the what? Yes, Pastor Ken Sumiwe, who is a great friend to this family. The Lord bless you. We also have Pastor Gibson from uh, ICC. Uh, yeah, Mombasa Road. I think one of the siblings go to that church. Thank you for coming. We have our Bishop Emeritus one, together with his wife, Mama Ndoyo. Uh, please start. We want to really acknowledge that you are here. You are a great friend to this family. We have many other pastors present. Please let me ask all the other pastors who are here to stand, except Gide. Uh, pastors who are here, please stand in case there are others who are here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see Pastor Mary, Pastor Kenga, and, and other pastors. Thank you for coming. The Lord bless you. Amen. We also have Pastor Hidith. Pastor Hidith is from representing the pastors from home. Uh, and, and we want to ask her to come on behalf of all the pastors. Please just... Uh, Bring some ones of condolences, then we'll proceed from there. Pastor Edith, please. Wana Asifiwe. Praise God. Praise God. Ah. To me poteza miri. Lakini yote tunacha kwake mwenyezi mungu. Na kwa hiyo. Litembea tu na mama moja ambaye ni wa familia lakini tena ni wa kanisa so please past what to aje tu aseme ni tu na moja and then itakuwa ni vizuri sana for the church back at home thank you mama Karen kuja 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 kwa pulpit please Mke mwenza kwa Mary kwa family tumepoteza mimi nilianza kuishi na hiyo family nikiwa bibi mkubwa na Mary ananifuata tuko na uzuni tunataka maombi mtuombe muombe semeji yangu mati na watoto apate nguvu sisi tunaimba kwa kimaragori kora onga hona ho homa Boki vara chanya saye bandu ya bova kiyasa bara mwizo minya yesu kura bunga ona oma na hango ya ona harahimu ni bunga ni bandu vanya saye. Kura me na ya ho kasoso. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you for the mama. Ah, uh, Mary, tunamjua, tunampen. It's yesterday I said we have a very big church there that we are building. 
na kwa hawa watu wote maana hata we have the materials ambayo ingekuja this week lakini kwa sababu shetani alituonea wivu kupitia ndani ya meri but i know that hata shetani akiona wivu Mungu anaenda kusimama praise be to the lord meri ndiye amekuwa kitukuma wenzake wote pamoja na Martin na Kelly wanaleta material tunajenga kanisa because we are still far from building that church and i know that uh, through what god has done through what god has done today there is something big that is going <laughs> praise be to the lord praise be to the lord it is very painful but let us leave it unto the lord for martin and the family mungu asimame pamoja nani sija kuwa nikiwakumbusha mambo na tithe but they know the day they sent before so martin god will not leave you with your family but god will sustain you and he will give you the strength and above all he will give you the wisdom from the above to take care of your family as i leave you with this psalms 121 psalms number 121 from verse 1 up to the end mungu anasema ya kwamba ni daudi anasema haya maneno ya kwamba i lift up my eyes where does my help come from ya kwamba nainua macho yangu milimani ninatazama juu msahada wangu utatoka wapi mati nataka nikwambia kwamba msahada wako utatoka kwa Mungu maana yeye ndiye aliyekuumba akakupatia meri kama ubavu wako nilifika wakati akaita meri na umesalia na watoto simama na Mungu atasimama na wewe that's why he says that anakulinda usiku na mchana wakati we unapolala yeye ako macho kukulinda wewe so atakulinda throughout hata kuwacha hata siku hata dakika hata moja atasema anasema kwamba hata wacha hata mguu wako upate kusongeshwa god is with you and god will remember you praise be to the lord so i'm called uh, reverend edith chavene from uh, upendo phd at digula district from western We came yesterday with mama. Ni kwa sababu tulikuwa tunapenda Mary sana. Kama angekuwa mtu mwingine hatungekuja. Eh. You know watu wengine huwa wanakuja tu kujificha but back at home hawasaidiani. Lakini kwa sababu Mary anatusaidia pamoja with the family that's why we came. Na tunahitaji tuendelee kuombea familia Mungu aendelee kusimama pamoja na hao. May you be blessed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you Pastor Edith. Good ones from the church in the village. May the Lord comfort and encourage you. Amen. My name is Justus Mugambi. I love the Lord. By the grace of God, I lead the pastors in this congregation. And uh, my wife is here. She's behind there, Lois. I want to ask her to stand. Thank you Lois for coming. And on behalf of Lois and uh, this congregation that meets here and the whole of Sitam I want to bring our pole to uh, my friend Martin and to the to the boys wonderful boys to your brother Karani and and the family to Patricia and the family and the extended relatives and members of this family we want to say pole that's why we are all here is to let you know how much we love you how much we care about you i have known mother for a long time for a long time after i finished college we were staying near their home and so we used to go there for a cup of tea a few young men that, that we connected with martin and uh, 
we came to connect again when I became a pastor here. And uh, I, I, I met Mary just a few days after I, I, I became a pastor here. And what, how good it was when she told me about Martin. And we were able to connect. And I can tell you that uh, for the few times I interacted with Mary, it's what we have really described. I wouldn't want to repeat. We prayed many times together, several times in the church. The last time we were praying right here. And she came with some tethers. We know that she, she was trusting God to be financed. That is the last time I interacted with Mary because we trusted God for a breakthrough. We prayed together many times. And um, as you can see from, from the Sunday school teachers, from the safari group, and from the many people who are here, is to tell you that Mary lived a life that really, really had added value to other people's lives. Amen. And we trust and believe that God will take care of this family. Many people have asked that we pray for them. Please, that is one reason we came. We have a prayer request. May we never fail to pray for this family. Martin himself has said, you know how tomorrow looks like after, after this. It's difficult to imagine. But I just want to encourage you, Martin, and the boys, Matthew, and the, your brothers. I want to encourage you. But this was sudden a surprise to us. But to God, it was not. God knew it would happen. And because he loves all of you, I can also tell you he has put things in place to ensure that whatever you wanted to become, you will become. Amen. Please believe that. Because tomorrow is in his hands. A moment like this, we ask questions many questions about death. And I want to read a, a story from Scripture, a parable from Scripture, because even during the time of Jesus, during the time of Paul, people still asked questions. And a moment like this is a time to try and, 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 uh, uh, and, and position ourselves according to God's word so that we are able to face the future. And so I read from the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19, to verse 31. And this is the parable or the story that Jesus gives to teach some truths to his, uh, to his disciples about death. So the Bible says, or Jesus gives this parable, that there was a rich man who was dressed in purple, that's a royal dressing. And the fine linen, you know, designer clothes. And the Bible says he lived in luxury every day. But as this gate was laid, a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his souls. What a description. Jesus was a master teacher to help people learn lessons that would transform their lives and their perspectives. So he says, at that, I mean, the time came when the beggar died. And the angels carried him to Abraham's side. Some say to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So both of them died. Then the Bible says, in heads or in hell, where he, was, where, uh, where he was in torment, that is the rich man, he looked up and saw Abraham from afar. I don't know if he was able to recognize that that is Abraham. With Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this place. 
What a description. In verse 25, Abraham replied, but Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, for Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us, between us and you, a great sassim has been set in place, so that those who want to come from here to you cannot. Nor can anyone cross over from there to us. Verse 27, he answered, Then I beg you, Father Abraham, said Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and they have the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Abraham said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. What a story. Let's pray again. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for this word that you, Jesus, who spoke yourself, may those intentions you had that day be fulfilled through that word now and in many days to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You see, friends, we are gathered here today, not planned. This is not something that, you know, we would have said next week we will be here. This is not planned. This was not known by any one of us. However, as I have said, God knew. God, and to ensure that we will leave our work, we will be healthy, we will be here today. However, something that we, that we all understand as we are here today, and this is really the reality, it is death is very difficult for everyone. Death is difficult for everyone. Whoever has experienced death in the family, especially in the family, or close friends, you know that death is painful. There is some pain that comes with death that is difficult to explain. As Martin said, it can be confusing. You actually don't know where to begin what to do, and thank God for the body of believers. That's why it is important, friends, for us to have close friends. That's why it is important for you, as we say in Sitam, to, uh, to belong to a safari group. You know, to, to a Bible study, rather, where you meet every week, once a week, board together. Because times when things are so confusing and you don't know what to do, it is your friends who step in. And we thank God that Martin made that confession that he, has, he doesn't even know how things have been happening because people took charge. People took charge. Hallelujah. However, with all the pain, with all the confusion, we realize that it is a reality. It is a reality. It's a reality. And so, all of us who have faced death we know how hard it is. And that's why it is so important for us to stand with other brethren. And, and for, for these young, young, young men, they have been left by their mom when it is, you know, when they are young. God, God will still take care of you. However, it is important for all of us, especially close friends and close relatives, really it's important for us to play our role in giving whatever support that we can give to them. Amen. I remember when I lost my mom, it is long ago, I was, I was a little older person, but I was still confused. Yeah, 207 in the church, it was difficult for me. The other day, not long ago, 2019, Lois lost, lost her mom, and we were here. Let me tell you, it was so difficult. 
And because we have seen God do all this for many who have these testimonies here, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will take care of you. So Jesus spoke many times about death. In, in, in John chapter 11, when his friend Lazarus dead, died, not this Lazarus, another Lazarus died, the brother to Mary and mother. The Bible tells us Jesus was also so hard that he also cried. And so Jesus gives a parable of this story about this Lazarus and the poor man and about the rich man who is not even named just to help people and learn some lessons about death. And we may not be able to learn many lessons about death today because we don't have time. I'll really do this very fast. I would just learn, like us to learn only three lessons. Number one, what we have seen from this scripture is that Jesus is trying to tell his disciples and us today that death will come to everyone. That's what he says. This time, the Bible says the time came. So in other words, the time will come for everyone. Since the time came when the beggar died, the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The time also came when the rich young man died, and both of them were buried. Brothers and sisters, it is important for us to know. You know, it's like a queue. There is a person who is ahead in the queue, and for sure, once that is finished, God calls that home is the next one. We are all in the queue. The challenge is we do not know when. The, 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 what we see here is the poor people die, the rich people die, the learned people die, those not learned die, even pastors die, even bishops. The great die, the mighty die. You know, the poor die, the rich die. It's, it's, it is a mystery. It is completely difficult for us to explain why God does the things he does. All we know is that because we came from him, he has the liberty to do what he wants. But as pastors, we have a very difficult job. All of you know that being a pastor is not easy. One of the things that makes pastor's job very difficult, but God gives us grace, is to witness and conduct funerals for all kinds of people. Brothers and sisters, it is not easy. It is painful. Maybe not for others, but for me, it is so difficult. Because I have gone to bury children. You know? Children, and you look at that coffin, you really wonder, God, your wisdom. We have buried young people at their prime. We have buried very old people. And now we are burying a person at their prime. I can tell you, friends, only God can understand those things. Let's not waste our time trying to ask questions. We can never get answers. We just want to accept that God in his wisdom knows what he is doing. Oh, he promises that he will take care of our pain. Even Jesus trying to face death was difficult. In the garden of Gethsemane, it was so hard seeing the cross. Until he came to a point where he told God, not my will, but your will. That is the language of a mature believer in God. Where even in moments like this, we can be able to say, however hard it is, God, not my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. And therefore, what Jesus is trying to say here, brothers and sisters, that we will all die. And therefore, I would want to say this, brothers and sisters. I find it very difficult when a human being kills another human being. It is not right. Because why do the obvious? We will all go. So why are you doing the obvious? 
Even people who commit suicide, why are you doing what God alone is supposed to do? And so it grieves my heart, seriously. When in this country, you know, you hear someone had been shot, someone not sick has been shot by a policeman or by someone else who has an... I mean, it doesn't make sense. Why do you take that thing and we hear people killing people at home and wherever else? Why do you do what you know God will do anyway? I pray that God will put some sense in all, you know, especially in those people who don't seem to have a heart and a knowledge and understanding that this is obvious. My heart also goes to the many children who don't even see the light of day because of some people who have some medical knowledge. And the child is born. Then death is not even born. They are conceived. And then it's unwanted. There's no child with that. There's no life with You have no authority not to unwant life. We all have the right from God to live. No one should be able to stop life in Jesus' name. That also tells me we may be in whatever kind of problems because this world is full of problems. Never wish to die. Why are you wishing for the obvious? Are you hearing me? We are, we are trusting who? The Lord. We are trusting the Lord. Because death is so final. And what Jesus is saying is, death will also. And the writer of the book of Hebrews points at the same truth. It is appointed for man to die once. And after that, judgment. Our death, uh, you know how our, 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 those who have gone ahead of us have gone. You, us and, you and me, we are next. We do not know when, we do not know how, but all we know is that death is the way of all men. So there is no need to boast. Amen. There is no need to live, you know, to live an arrogant life because we will all die. The second thing Jesus, I think, wants to tell the disciples and all of us is that <laughs> there are two places. There is hell and there is heaven. That's what we see. That is actually the gist of this story. Because Lazarus died and the Bible tells us where he went. Where did he go? To heaven, to Bosom, to Abraham's side. And um, in this place called heaven, <laughs> the Bible describes it not only here but in many other places. And we know it, but the Bible describes it as a good place. Amen. It's a place that is so good that it's difficult to imagine how good that place is. It is a culmination of goodness. You know, it, it, the Bible says in the book of John, I think, yes, yeah, chapter 14, verse 1, uh, and to verse 3, do not, be, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, as Jesus is saying, for in my Father's house, for my Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. In other words, in heaven, <laughs> is a, the, the, you know, all the troubles of the world are not there, praise the Lord. That is a perfected place. Jesus is preparing a good place for us. And in that heaven, when you read the book of Revelations, my friends, there is no death. Do I have a witness here? There is no more death in heaven. It's a death-free place. Death is defeated forevermore. Hallelujah. In that place, the Bible says, there is no darkness. You know what I want to occupy a corner? There is nowhere to hide. 
Can you imagine a place like that? Jesus himself will be the son, you know. From the beginning to the end, there will be, hallelujah. Heaven is a good place. Please research about how heaven is. In heaven, there is no pain. There is no crying. There is no separation anymore. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, heaven is the home of the righteous. The home of the righteous. What? No, what are the, the singer said, sang and said, how beautiful heaven must be. Streets of gold, no crying, no fears, no male, no female. We will all be the children of God. Heaven is a good place. Pastors, believers, let us preach more about heaven. Let's welcome people. Let's push people into heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because in heaven, we will live there forever and ever. In heaven, we will be singing, you know? What we know is that we, were, we, we, we got that passage from the book of Revelation read to us. And friends, everybody, all tribes, all colors, ev we'll all be in heaven. And we'll be having great things there, worship from beginning to the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew is a great worshiper. Did you hear him? Maybe taken from the mother directly. And he sings here in the worship. A good friend of mine. Brothers and sisters, we are rehearsing for heaven. That reality needs to sink in our hearts. This is the hope of the believer. That is why we preach. That's why we, 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 we have refused all the things of the world. That's why we work hard. It's because there is heaven for you and for me. Amen? But also, as much as there is heaven, there is also hell. And Jesus is painting a picture that hell is a bad place. This is the culmination of what is bad. You know, this is the real badness. I don't know how to describe it, you know, but this is the real badness, you know? If there is English like that. And the Bible tells us, in that place, listen, there is suffering. In hell, all the kind of suffering, the full intensity of suffering is where? Is in hell. And the Bible says the rich, the rich man was in deep suffering. It was terrible for him. It was indescribably tormenting. And he says the torment there was just too much. In other words, there is fire that can never be quenched. We read the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8, it says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, you know, the idolaters, and all liars, ouch, they will be consigned to the lake of fire, you know, of burning sulfur. And he says, this is the second death. Friends, death. I mean, uh, the air is not a good place. And some people want to discount all these things. You say that, you know, God is so loving. How does he take people to hell to suffer forever? Unless then the scripture is all true. And the scripture is true, isn't it? However much we wish that they would be removed from there, it, the truth is, the reality is, it is there. And so, Friends, it is important, therefore, that that lesson, I think, Paul, I mean, Jesus wanted the disciples to learn, and which we need to learn, is that, therefore, in light of this, the fact that people die, the fact that is hell, that is heaven, then we must make choices. Jesus wanted people to know that we must make choices. We must make choices, number one, on how to live now. How to live now. And that is what is underlined for Lazarus. That is what is underlined, especially for the rich man, the kind of life that he chose. This is not to say that we must not wear designer clothes. This is not to say that we should not eat good food. This is not to say that we should not live a good life. Jesus is not saying that. Because there are many rich people who are born again 
and who are going to heaven. Jesus is saying that we must live with this consciousness that life does not consist on the things of this world. Hallelujah. You, live, you are rich, God gives you rich, but you live a normal life. You know, sometimes rich people and some of the big people, not all, some of the rich people and some of the, the big people, you know, just big and small people. I think they act and live like they are not going to die. They are work like some of the politicians and people across the world who have a lot of that power. They can even kill people and feel nothing. So like, that's what Jesus is talking about. Please come back to yourself. You are still eating food. Please come back to yourself. You are still sweating. Please come back to yourself. You are still a normal human being and you are growing older. <laughs> the fact that you are rich doesn't mean that your gray hair will not come or it will not go, you know? The hair will not go. It will go. <laughs> Let's be sober. How we live now is critical. That's what Jesus is saying. Paul writing to Timothy tells, talks a little bit about riches and he tells people who are rich to live sensibly and to use whatever they have, not just for themselves, but to help others. Like Mary did, cook food for other people to eat. Don't close your house with padlocks all the time. Cook food for your neighbors to eat, for your friends to eat. Amen. Build churches in the village. I like that, PAG. You know? When God gives you money, just be generous with it. Help other people to rise up. Are you hearing me? And I am praying that God will make all of us very rich, including me. Very rich. May the Lord make you very rich. I want to tell these young people that God will make you very rich. All I know is, friends, even from my own life, I don't know about the fathers, but God answers the prayers of the mothers. Mothers, are you with me? I don't know why, but just God answers the... I also believe maybe I'm a pastor because of the prayers of my mother. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. So I can let you know, God, there is no way your mother would have served God like this. And I had to you were a Take this from me. God will make you rich. God will make you wealth. You will not lack. Because the God we trust is trustworthy. He is trustworthy. David says, I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the rich, I mean the, the righteous, forsaken, or their children, beg for bread. You can quote that to God. All your life. And I can assure you, God will provide grace upon grace. Those will be hoped, Martin, that could, even, could not have been hoped when Mary was there. God is merciful. God is gracious. Friends, what we are, the word of God is telling us today, let's live consciously now with all that God gives us. Amen. Amen. The rich man made a choice to enjoy life now and he forgot that there is a future there. Please, let's not forget there is a future. One reason why death, I mean, God allows us to come to a place like this because not everyone, new Mary, not everybody. One reason I think God allows us to attend a place like this is so that we can take stock. We can rethink our lives again. Please don't just go home and everything is as usual. It's so that we can rethink our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other choice we must make is, and this is the last I had with this, is the choice of salvation. The Bible says in verse 27, he answered, Then I beg you, Father, hey, I beg you. You know that's an intense language. It's a language of finality. I beg you, Abraham, send Lazarus to my family. 
For I have five brothers, I think he was the firstborn or something. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses. In other words, he was saying they have Pastor Wedo, <laughs> they have Pastor Precious, they have Pastor Hide, the name, they have Pastor who? Martin Badu, in Gong, they have Pastor Kimiwe, in EICC Mobasa Road, they have Pastor Gibson, here they have Pastor Moffat and myself and other pastors here. If they can't hear them, they will not hear even if someone comes from the dead. Listen, we can only make the choice of salvation when we are here on earth. Don't be seated by the enemy or some clever language. That, oh, somewhere in purgatory, oh, we will pray for you. We are praying for people here, not the people there. There it is finished. Don't be seated with some good language. And you know you will also be here all alone, not with your friends, not with your family, alone, not with your property. Hakuna mutu atareva shamba. Wada wanapenda shamba. Na hakuna mutu atabeba Mercedes Benz. Na hakuna mutu atabeba nyumba. Hata nguo. Watakutaftia zingine. Hallelujah. The choice must be made here. And now. What I can tell you, friends, is this. This is, this is what we preach. You don't lose anything by being born again. By making the choice of salvation, you don't lose anything here except the sin. Amen? So someone said, you better believe there is God. Give yourself to him. Please listen to this. Give yourself to him like we have done. Then when that time comes, you go there, you close your eyes, you open them there, you meet there is no heaven. There is no God. You know? Rather than not believe, and then you go there and you are surprised, all oh, those things are true, you would have lost forever. Please believe like us. We are not missing all the... We are missing that. We are missing that. That is okay with us. Let us go there to heaven. Even if there is no heaven, we are okay. We are, dis- we are advantaged both ways. But you, you will be disadvantaged both. Please make a choice. That's what God, Jesus is telling his disciples and us today. Make a choice. You cannot decide for another person. Decide for yourself. Parents cannot decide for their children. You cannot decide for your spouse. Oh, my goodness. And the way we love our spouses. Amen. For the Bible says, it is appointed for a man to die once after that judgment. In other words, I'm saying pastors and all who are here, there is need for urgent preaching and witnessing and inviting people to accept Jesus as their personal Savior. We need to call people to salvation without fear. And of course, with a sense of urgency, because we don't know the time. I am saying we don't have a lot of time to preach. Time is running out. We don't have time to keep on repeating these things to you. There is no time. Make up your mind now. That's what Paul tells the believers in Corinth, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. It says, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor... I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. I pray that those who are not born again, who are here, who are out there, that you take advantage of this situation and give your life to Jesus. Time to live without making up your mind is out. Today is the day of now is the time of 
Shall we bow our heads before the Lord this afternoon? Each one of us, we are bowing before the Lord. I want you to reflect on your life as I reflect on mine today. And ask yourself, if you came today, where would you go? Would you go where Lazarus was or would you go where the rich was? Just ask yourself, as I ask myself. Me, I am sure. Are you sure yourself? That is, that's a finality question. Please answer that question now. Answer it as you go home. Answer it tomorrow. That's a question you must answer. Don't bring the issue of your spouse, of your children, of your parents, of your relatives. It is a personal decision. I want to ask, if you are here, you are not born again, and you want to give your life to Jesus, you can raise up your hand, and I will pray with you. You raise up your hand, then I can pray with you later after this service. Anyone. These are the liberate calls that we make as pastors. Anyone. Because it's urgent. The door can be closed anytime. Anyone. Can't see any hand. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to all of us who are here. We know you have had an agenda. May that agenda be fulfilled. Lord, I pray for those of us who are born again that you will help us, Lord, to see the urgency of calling others into the kingdom. We pray for all of us who are born again that you help us to live a life that is submitted totally to you. Lord, I pray for those who are not sure. Help of them to be sure, oh God. Pray for those who are not born again. The Lord will touch them in the name of Jesus. And they will surrender their lives like that of men. So that, Lord, one day we will see her again. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. We want to pray for the family. And we want to ask the family, please, to come and stand around the your beloved one, and we will make a prayer. All of us, we want to pray for this family. We want to begin to pray for this family. Amen. Thank you. All the family members. Let me ask uh, Bishop Ken to come and make a prayer for this family. That the Lord may encourage you and strengthen you. Shall we all rise together as we pray for them? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, for the pastors who are here, some of you in the congregation, why don't you come? Let's just surround them and let's just lay hands on them and pray together with them. The pastors that are in the midst of us, just come together as we do this. Hallelujah. Amen. Every warm to my warm to my Every warm to my neo Buana Watapata Barak Najamim to my neo Buana Warm to my neo Buana Every warm to my neo Buana Watapata Barak Nakani salim to my neo bana. Wam to my neo bana. Heri, heri, wam.
come to my Niobana, Watapata, Baraka, Baba, Wabinguni, Hakuna Kama, we, we, Baba, Wabingu, Wabinguni, Hakuna Kama, we, Kweli Baba wa Faraja Hakuna kama wewe Baba wa Faraja Hakuna kama wewe Kweli heri wa mtumaini yobwana Tumaini yobwana Yesu eri wa mtumaini yobwana Watapata baraka Why don't you just stretch your hand Let's just talk to the Lord about this family Just commit them to Him Pray that the God of all comfort May surround them Pray that the peace of God May be their portion at this time just pray that the Lord will uphold them with His righteous right hand. It is not an easy thing to lose a loved one. It is not an easy thing to lose a mother. It is not an easy thing to lose a wife. But the Lord, who is that friend who sticketh closer than a brother? Oh God, would you stretch your hand upon this family? Would you move into their need and into their situations? Would you avail your grace and mercy in the midst of their need, O oh God, in the midst of their loneliness, in the midst, O oh God, of their seeking and of their desire? Father, we look to you. We pray that you may envelop them, Lord, with your presence that will never leave them, neither will you forsake them. Father, we commend this family into your hand. And we ask, O oh, King of glory, you who is our refuge and our strength, the ever-present help in the time of trouble such as this, O oh God. Father, your word says that the righteous run into your name and they find safety in you, O oh God. And that is what we do for this family. We pray that they may find safety in you, O oh King of kings. Lord, in the times of their seeking, in the times of their desire, even to be with their loved one who has departed, Father, would you come and surround them? Would you come and be their peace? Would you come and be their comfort, O oh God? Would you come and be their assurance in the midst of what they are going through? Your word says that even as we walk through this valley of the shadow of death, we shall not fear any evil because with your rod and with your staff, you comfort us, O oh God. May you comfort this family. May you uphold them with your righteous right hand. May you go with them even in the days that are ahead of them. We particularly pray for Martin, O oh God. The Lord, even as he has said, is still trying to come to grips with the reality of this loss. Father, would you move with him, O oh God, into the future that is ahead of him? Would you guide his steps, O oh Lord? And would you be that friend who sticks closer than a brother? Would you comfort him, O oh God? We pray for this lovely young man, and we commend them into your hand, O oh Lord, in the moment that they will lose and they would miss the moments with their mother. Lord, would you be there with them, O oh God? in their travail, in their needs, O oh, King of Kings, would you be more than sufficient? In their school life, O oh, Father, in their careers, as they move on into life, Father, would you go with them? And would you provide for them, O oh, Lord? We pray for the extended family here. Dad came and he said that he has never wept like this time. Father is your servant and I pray that you may surround him together with mama who has not been well. The Lord they may find strength in you and recovery from this loss, O King of Kings. And indeed as we have heard from your servant that it is all not at loss. 
because the grave has been denied and death has lost its victory. Because those who have rested in you will with you also be raised into the newness of life. And we will dwell with you in the heavenly place for eternity. And that is our hope. And that is our encouragement tonight. That even in the midst of all that has gone on, there is hope beyond the grave. There is a reward that awaits our sister who travailed among us, the children here, who mentored many, who was a friend to many, and who lived an upright life before you. And indeed, we know that you have received her in the heavenly place, and you have said, welcome home, good and faithful daughter of mine. Lord, we want to commend this family into your hand as they will be traveling tomorrow. Our roads have become very dangerous. But we want to cover and blanket all the way up to Maragoli. There won't be any accident. There won't be any harm or danger. That everything will be well. And they will arrive safely back at home. We want to pray for the church back at home and all those who are awaiting that everything will be coordinated. There will not be any disagreement. There will not be any work of darkness that may want to rear its head in the name of tradition or culture. Father, we thank you. And so we commit and commend this family into your hand. You who is the God of all comfort and the Father of compassion, just envelop them with your peace and with your presence. And we bless you and honor you because we ask in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and even the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. the life of our dear sister Mary who has gone to be with the Lord. The Bible says there is jubilation in heaven whenever any one of our sons and daughters of God go into his presence. I want us just to give a big hand of celebration. Can we do that? Let's just celebrate the life of Mary, a great woman of God, wonderful wife, marvelous mother to these people here. And a great friend to all of us who are here tonight. God bless you. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Ken. Let's appreciate him. Asante sana. And thank you for your patience for being with us. We come to the end of our program. I want to invite our chairman to just briefly pass a vote of thanks. And then we will be able to do our recession from that moment. Karibi sana. Amen. Praise the Lord. One as we sana, church. Shall we appreciate these ministers of the word who've done such an amazing job. They've led us so well. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to you for being so patient with us uh, this time. Uh, it is such a joy and an encouragement for this family.
that you've been here and that you chose to spend your time to be with us uh, this very significant day. I just uh, want to beg for your patience for just a few minutes so that I can um, uh, read some notices of uh, the next steps that we're going to be taking after today and also just to pass a vote of thanks. But just before I do that, let me ask whether Dr. Okemwa is here. Is Dr. Okemwa here? Okay. All right. I think Dr. Okemwa is not here. Okay. Um, so then let me just move quickly to just uh, um, acknowledge the amazing work that uh, the organizing committee has done, and that committee is here in our midst. I just want to ask them to stand because I am standing here and speaking on their behalf. So can the organizing committee uh, of uh, the, this particular funeral stand, the members, wherever you are, I'd want to just ask these members to acknowledge you and to appreciate you for the work you've done. And see them uh, in different corners. Thank you so much. That team has done an amazing job. Please, you can have your seat. Uh, it's been a very, very stretching, uh, let me say, last four days from the time this happened. And this committee came together to organize and to plan uh, the event of giving this servant of the Most High a decent send-off. And um, I therefore would want to move on to just explain uh, how we'll be progressing uh, from here. Um, now, uh, we thank you so much for choosing to be here. We thank you for giving for uh, this particular cause. And showing up here is a show of love and a show of um, just that ministry of fellowship to this family. And especially an acknowledgement of the great work that Mary has done over the years. And so tomorrow we also want to invite you to travel with us. The burial is going to be happening on Saturday the, uh, at uh, Digula in Vihiga. That will be on Saturday. But we will be traveling tomorrow. The journey will be commencing from Lee Funeral Home at 7 o'clock in the morning. And so we will meet at uh, Lee Funeral Home at 7 and leave at exactly at 7.30. So we still have uh, opportunities for those who may need uh, transport to get there. I would want to just ask our transport manager, uh, Eric, to stand so that you can see him. Uh, that is uh, Eric. He's been doing a very good job in organizing transport. Eric is going to be right behind there. So in case you've not put up your, your name and you'd like to travel together with the family tomorrow, please do so, so that you can be slotted uh, into um, a vehicle to, to, to travel with us. We'd like to see all of you, if it were possible. It would be such a joy for us just to go uh, as a family of faith to show solidarity with this family that is going through a difficult time. We have also um, negotiated some uh, accommodation um, arrangement uh, to a couple of hotels nearby because we do not intend to travel at night. And so uh, after, uh, so the travel day will be tomorrow on, on Friday, and then we'll spend the night and the burial ceremony will start on Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning for the rest of the day. And in the evening, we will not be making our journey back to Nairobi yet. We will spend the night and commence our journey back on Sunday morning. So that means that we will require some accommodation for all those that will be coming. And we want to confirm that we have uh, uh, sufficient accommodation at very discounted rates that have already been organized. So again, if you are going to be traveling with us, please put up your name with Eric so that we can ensure that we've um, made the relevant bookings for tomorrow. So uh, you're giving your name to Eric for both transport and accommodation. Excellent. And so uh, we really will uh, uh, look forward to seeing all of you uh, tomorrow at Lee Pinner Home at 7 o'clock in the morning. And those that will not be traveling with us, we ask that you continue praying with us. The event is going to be streamed live 
uh, on uh, various social media platforms and that link is going to be shared in our group. So for those who will not be able to travel, you'll be able to participate in the event by logging into those uh, social media platforms, Facebook Live and also on YouTube. All right, so I am done with the notices. Allow me to just acknowledge uh, the immense contribution that has been made by so many of us to give our sister a decent send-off. But first, I would really want us to thank God. He is the one that Mary served and lived for. He is the one that has called Mary home. And he is the one who has gathered us here today so that we can be able to witness what it is to celebrate a life well lived. Can we celebrate the Lord for that? Amen. The Lord has been so gracious to us through this time. I have a very long list, so allow me not to mention each one of all those that have contributed because there are so many that have given in one way or the other. But just allow me just to mention a few and I will group everybody else together and I beg that you appreciate that as an acknowledgement of your contribution in working with us this journey. And so on behalf of the Karani's family, would want to specifically acknowledge the Sitam Church that have worked with this family right from the time when this happened. Um, I still remember uh, Martin uh, just giving a testimony of how he was surprised that they are not even prepared for the number of people who turned up on day one. And that was led by the Sitam Church. And so we acknowledge the leadership that has been offered by the Reverend uh, Mugambi, who is a senior pastor here, the, um, the Reverend uh, uh, Kimiwe, who is the uh, um, Deputy Bishop Emeritus. Thank you so much. These uh, leaders have also been dear families to, uh, dear, dear friends to this family. Uh, we've had, you know, Reverend Benson and Paul that has been uh, ministering to us here and the entire pastoral team that was sent to even lead the various sessions of the prayers that were being held from Monday up to yesterday. Can we acknowledge them with a clap? Thank you so much, Sitam Fellowship, for just being there and working with the family in the hour of need. And alongside the pastors, we had various ministries, the children's ministry, uh, the, the Upendo Safari group, the, um, there was a Young Adults Fellowship from Parkland Baptist, the BSF uh, Fellowship. All these have really worked with this family. And we just want to acknowledge uh, what you've done for this family because it's such a show of love. But as I served in the committee, one of the things that uh, really touched me as I served in the committee is just to see an older generation that have been friends with the parents of Martin and they have remained true to their word in standing there for these children through their turns and through the difficulties. They have been found faithful. I just want to ask some of those men to just stand up. I think those, I, I, I do remember those um, Mr. Majani, Madia Vale, there are uh, several friends of uh, Zablon and um, Mama Fanis. These people have remained true. They have kept their word when they said they are going to stand with these children. And we've continued seeing them. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless your faithfulness. Amen. Allow me to acknowledge the various workmates uh, where Mary worked, where Martin has worked, at the Kenya Postal Directorate, at the ICT Authority, at Fireball. I just want to acknowledge all the colleagues together. Can we appre appreciate them with a, with a clap? I want to specifically just mention Kenya Post, uh, Postal Directory because they were given a chance, but they are not come. Can I ask uh, their, their representative to stand wherever they are because they actually had a tribute, but they didn't get the opportunity to do that? Are they here? Okay, there they are, that team. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. I'd like to, again, just appreciate... Um, the hand of fellowship that has been extended to these children, to 
Matthew to Michael and to Mark and their friends and their school and institutions where they are schooled. They've been there for them. They have worked with them. And we just want to acknowledge the, the parents' fellowship for Form 1 form, and Form 4 at Light Academy. Can we give them a clap? They've really uh, been there for this family. Uh, the Strathmore College and also McKinney School. We really appreciate you being there for the family and may the Lord bless you so much. We've also had uh, the, the, the old, uh, you know, classmates, the alumni of Alliance who are here. Can we appreciate the Alliance girls? Uh, the KU, KU class of 1998 and the University of Nairobi class of 1998. Thank you so much for your continued show of solidarity. The Euro Villas neighborhood, they were there to just really receive the guests that were visiting and they gave so much support. We just want to appreciate them for their show of friendship. Let's appreciate the Euro Villa neighborhood. The family members, they've been amazing. And they've showed so much strength and character in the hour of need to just come and stand here and to be able to pay their tributes. Can we all acknowledge these parents, Pastor and Mrs. Moshina, and the family of the Karanis that have stood here and they've been able to just come and honor us by being able to speak even in the hour of pain. May the Lord continue to strengthen you and to renew your strength. And finally, to all of you, so many that have been able to turn up, not just today, but every single day that we've had prayers. We really appreciate your, your fellowship, your encouragement over the last one week. We had a very, uh, you know, stretching budget and very few days to meet that budget. And because of your faithfulness, I'm here to testify that we were able to meet our budget. Thank you so much. And so we're going to be able to give our sister a decent send of because of your faithfulness. We are overwhelmed by your generosity and by your uh, show of love to this, uh, to this family. And we only say, may the Lord bless you. We leave you with a, a scripture in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. That the Lord is not unjust. He will not, not forget every act of kindness that you showed your people and you continue to show them. So may the Lord bless you. Amen. And I take this back to the pastor. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bona Chairman. We have come to the very end uh, of our program. We will be having our recession right about this moment. Um, and at the, at the entrance, just behind you there, we will be able to do body viewing for anybody who would like to do that. We will make that provision at the tail end. The family will also be around. You can say hi to them, comfort with them, and share your personal messages of condolence to them. Shall we be upstanding? Once again, thank you very much for joining us today. We are happy to have all of you, and we pray that we'll continue to be there and strengthen this family through this time of grief. And now may the Lord bless you, and may he cause his face to shine upon you. May he crown you with all his goodness. And may he bless us even as we go home from this moment. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So I'll ask the pastors to please come and help us with the procession. Then the family member will be able to follow um, with the body. And then the rest of us, we will come in that order at the, ta at, at the back door where we'll be able to view worship team. I'm reminded that we, the poll bearers, please come so that you may help us to to, 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 to carry the body of our departed sister. Paul Bearers, if you're there, please come. The, the, the team that helped us when we were coming in, we need you back. Thank you.
Members of the organizing committee are requested to please stay back for a little while. You can meet on this side of the sanctuary to my right, which is your left. Members of the organizing committee, thank you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is, this is my story, yeah, this is my song, praising my Savior. my song praising praising my of me all is at rest all is at rest I in my savior I in my savior I'm happy and blessed watching watching and we watching and waiting above you know, filled with his goodness lost in his so this is, is my soul, yeah, this is my song, yeah, praising Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. So this is my, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Yes, Sunday, yes, Sunday, 
Find rest, my soul, find rest, my soul, in Christ alone, no is far, no is far, in quietness, in a quietness, enter. And the oceans rise and the thunders roam. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you are God. When the oceans rise, when the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will go with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, you God. When the oceans rise, when the oceans rise, and the thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you were king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you 
Oh, Salah. 